Hey, Tanesh, this episode is brought to you by the good folks at Bevel. Ow. Listen, Bevel does not stop being a leader in the grooming industry, okay? I'm going to tell you why. You know why? Because they got the best shaver and they got the best razor. You want to find out about these products, you want some discounts, head on over to getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Again, that's getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Miss Lisa, you know, you want your guys to be clean shaven. That's right. I want your face to feel like a baby's bottom. Mm. And the only faces I'm trusting are the ones that are being touched by the bevel blade. Listen, getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Tell them Premium Pete Show sent you. That's Cheer. right. And Tanesh, this episode is also brought to you by the good folks at College of Hip Hop. I love them. Listen, College of Hip Hop is an app. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and download that app. I'm telling you right now, that app has tons of information on it. It's available across all major um, platforms. app platforms. You know, like Apple. I don't even know Google what Samsung. Play. I don't know what Samsung has. I don't either, because I don't trust anybody who has a Samsung phone or anybody that's not downloading this College of Hip Hop app. You know, I, I say that about Samsung, but I think about when I really think about it, I got a lot of friends that have Samsung phones. I don't trust your friends. I got to get rid of them then. <laughs> now I'm only playing. Listen, internet, download the Hip Hop College app. I'm telling you right now, they have tons of content on there, tons of information. Listen, I always tell you, open mind, open learning. Open legs. And you're going to get more pussy if you download this app right <laughs> here. They have templates for contracts. They're going to answer all of your questions. Anything you need is right at your fingertips. Go tell, download that. Download the College of Hip Hop today. Tell them the Prim P Show sent you. Now let's get to the show. Al. Cheer. Come on, everybody, get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want to scoop in the low, down low. Listen to the show, cause Milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. Miss Lissa knows. It's the Premium Pete Show. I can show you how to touch what you can't see. So close your eyes, visualize, make it HD. They try to duplicate the style, but they ain't me. They wasn't raised how I'm raised. I'm a straight G I grew up seeing Uncle Clark with the gold teeth He in the front yard washing on the gold D's I'm dreaming about one day how I'ma do mine That's when I learn you get it all in due time Yeah, we live, ooh, man ooh. Chasing Cash in the flesh, baby voice. There you go Thank Listen. you, thank you, thank you Chasing Cash, welcome to the show Yeah, man, happy to be here Long time coming, man You know what I mean? I feel a welcome, you know We, we go back like like, like Tony like Soprano cool and Lil Michael You know what Yo, I mean? Yo, let me tell you something First of all, for the internet's listening w- Welcome back to another episode of the Premium Peace Show. Ow. Miss Listen knows. Talk to them real quick. First of all, that was amazing. And never have we done that. So normally Thank I you. open the show up with one of my favorite rhymes. And that was a pleasure. So kudos special, to special you. Special guest bars. Special yeah, bars. I appreciate you letting me, you know what I mean, introduce something new. You got man. a really good Evolution. voice. Like, <laughs> and you kind of, like, Thank I'm you. staring at you and I'm staring at Pete. And I know you have no relation. But you kind of feel like you're the um, African. Mm. A little like a Moroccan. mix. Moroccan. Moroccan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I felt that. French Matana yeah. vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can yo, one of your cousins. Yo, back, back to, back to uh, uh, where you said Tony Soprano. I got to tell the internet's a funny story, Chase, right? So my man Isaiah Tigarachi, you know, he, he's part of the show. He, actually, I told him, like, yo, I want to get, uh, uh, um, you know, some Soprano members on. Homeboy is like, yo, what do you think about Uncle Junior? I said, what are you talking about? I fucking love to have Uncle yeah, Junior no, on the show. Yeah, no, that would be Junior yeah. Corrado? Come yeah, yeah. on, man. So check, this out. so check this out. Dude e- finds an email, emails Uncle Junior, right? He gets an email back, and it's like something like it's an automated message. I like, call this number. He don't take, like, emails. So my man Isaiah calls the number, and he's like, yo, what's up, man? My name's Isaiah. I'm with the Premium Pete Show. He's like, who? Where? And the guy's like, who? Wh- how'd you get my number? And he's trying to tell him. That, like, yo, the way I emailed you, you know, it, it gives you a number. The dude's like, how'd you get my number? Why are you calling me? What do you want? And I'm like, yo, I'm dying. I'm like, yo, it's funny because it's like, when you think about Uncle Junior, this is something It's like, exactly him. He's senile in the it, fucking Sopranos. Exactly. <laughs> so I love that his name is Uncle Junior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, that's the ill shit. So stay tuned. We'll see if uh, Uncle Junior makes yeah, it on man. the show. OG Corrado, man. We, we we need you back. Yeah, but, so, but listen, internet. I wanted to have Chase and Cash on for a minute. And like we said, it's been a minute that, that you know, it should have happened and, and now it's happening. But to me, not only do I look at you as a producer, 
artist, you know, uh, entrepreneur. Thank you. Um, m- most definitely an inspiring individual. I mean, what are the other AKAs they want to call Chasing Cash? Um, uh, I would just say Urban Revolutionary. You mm-hmm. know what black I mean? Jesus? Yeah, yeah, the Black Sexy, Jesus. Sexy, caramel-complected man <laughs> with locks is what I'm going to go with. I'm well, I'm not going to say With that. no ring. I'm digging it. And I'm digging it I'm as digging well. It. Yeah, yeah. Savion Glover's sexier, younger brother. Man, look, I'm, you really just made my day saying Savion Glover. <laughs> That's what's what? up. Now, I'm look. to make your day. No, nah, real talk. That Savion Glover was big to me. Him and Gregory Hines. Yeah. You know, um, Sesame Street. You know, I, I ain't had cable. So, <laughs> you know, it took a while before we got cable. So, you know, seeing that. Um, I always saw Gregory Hines in mm. movies that my mom watched. You know, when I was younger, black cinema was like at least popping to me. You know, mm. you, I guess it seemed like you had more black films being showed to you in a different variety. You know, TV, you know, movie theater, et cetera, et cetera, just coming out on tapes and shit. And I remember watching a lot of Gregory Hines stuff. And I remember one time seeing Savion Glover in A Peace With Him. Mm. And then I saw Savion Glover tap dancing with Elmo and I fell in love with it. And when I was younger, you know, I used to try and tap. I don't know if you've ever been to New Orleans, but tapping is big. You know what I mean? If you come to the so French Quarter, the so you're going to see kids tapping. That's right. the norm in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything like jazz performance, I was into that early. Like I was into tapping before I was into... You know, really knowing what trapping, the, yeah, challenge, yeah, yeah, or yeah, like the cabbage patch or any of them like yes. old school. You know, like kids play moves and shit. You know, what, what about uh, instruments? Yeah, yeah, instruments. Any instrument was all brass and drum. You know, um, growing up around bands, every school has a band. All the colleges have bands. Anybody that's familiar with the movie Drumline, that's pretty much what I grew up in. Uh, Just not the ATL version, but the New Orleans version. The New Orleans version of it is more... Soulful. Yeah, based on like really playing songs on the radio. You know what I mean? Like more in Atlanta where they kind of like, they have more like fight songs and school songs and shit like that. We have that too, but it's more or less literally like who can take the hottest song at the moment and figure mm. out a way to do a cover of it and make it ill and really play like the lyric part, the illest. Like if you can play the lyric part of the song, the mm. illest, mm. that makes your band the illest. Yeah. How do you learn the lyric part of the song? Is that like here? like? like yeah, like a lot of times it's probably going to be like the trumpet person, okay. the person who's going to play like the higher notes. And um, so let me think of one. I heard a band play uh, Rolling in the Deep. Mm. Oh. It was so crazy. Like Adele. Yeah. Mm. It, uh, and then the, the horn is like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and like I tried to a, play the trumpet when yeah, I was yeah. younger. It's a certain way you have to. Yeah, yeah, it's you tough. You can split your lip. Yeah, 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 it's tough. Wait, it's wait, hard. What you, what you, what you talking about spitting? You know, I got good at the, but not <laughs> okay. the trumpet part. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be. Uh, <laughs> I could. I could I don't With mean to have a, a dirty mind, me, but Dizzy Gillespie. You know that's where band leader come from. That's where the term out. band leader come really? from. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's I'm that's leading what, the band. That's what they used to I am call. Chopper, Babs, and Elliot Ness. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so listen, <laughs> Chase. You grew up in New Orleans, for those who don't yeah, know. Yeah, shout out Noah. Chopper for making a bit. Noah, right? <laughs> yeah. You grew up in New Orleans, right? Mom yes, and sir. dad? Yeah, yeah. My, my mom and dad are from Mississippi, but they met in New Orleans at a Super Bowl party, and then they had me. You a little light skin. You have any Caucasian in your family? Down the line. My okay. great-grandmother is okay. French. Got yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, Heard from you. like, you know, that whole little slave era where they did the little mulatto thing that and got era. mixed up. All the eras. Yeah, yeah. My great-great-grandpa must have snuck into, like, the crib and mm-hmm. hit my great-great-grandma. <laughs> So cute. I'm imagining. I'm sorry. In my anointed imagination, because I just finished watching Birth of a Nation. Your grandmother was Gabrielle Union. Your grandfather was that that man. That I was like, I'm gonna hang all of y'all if y'all don't let me it's get into this. It's actually the other dip. way around. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 great grandmother was the French woman, oh. and then my great grandfather was a guy named Jack who was in the field. Jake who was in the field, Jake. big strong guy. And um, but they're not nec- they're they're what you would call black, but they're not black. You know what I mean? A lot of the people who were black were native Indians. You know what I mean? Like they were Indians, talk like Taino talk. Indians yes. and shit sure. like that. You know, so when I, when a lot of people talk about slavery and shit, I relate to it because I'm black and I always want to you know associate with my people to get us out the struggle. But I actually do know my roots. Like I got real pictures of like my great grandpa and my great grandmother and like Indian tribes and their hair and like right. stitched up in you know their designs and shit shit like that and um yeah that was like a lot of what was going on in, in mississippi like a lot of indians and shit like that uh, more or less like that other like super slavery that was more like 
Alabama, yeah. you know what mm. I mean, and shit like that. Even though it happened in Mississippi, but it wasn't you got as a, intense. yeah, you got like a lot of Native Indi- Indians in like that area where like that's where Mardi Gras comes from. Okay. You feel me? Like where everybody's dressing up like Indians. That's all along the coast of New Orleans, of Louisiana, through Mississippi, through like the coast of Alabama, stopping in Mobile. So you growing up in New Orleans, right? Yeah. You got Mardi Gras there every year, right? Every year. So I mean, and jazz. When, when did you lose your virginity? <laughs> Uh man, fifteen man. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna think it was a little bit earlier. No, than that. no, I lost my virginity as far as like what I saw in my eyes. I lost that young. Yeah, I saw a nigga, eight years old. I saw somebody get shot before I lost my virginity. I lost my virginity three times. <laughs> yeah, three times. I was a liar back in the days. I lied. I pussy. feel you. I'm like this is yours. The first time. <laughs> but nah, you do man. A uh, um, and you lie. Yeah, I lost my. Uh, to a to a girl that was older than me too yeah okay, i think nice. I, I think did. i lied to her she was filipina and she was like two grades higher than me and i wanted to take her to a dance and um i was driving that's how i was able to lie to her because when you were 15 you could get like a driver's permit okay, as okay, long okay. as somebody rolled with you and shit but i had a job and i was responsible so my mom used to let me do my thing and shit like that so i kind of always had like people give me leeway to kind of carry myself as somebody older Mm -hmm. and when i got that opportunity i never wanted to fuck it up to where they treated me like a little nigga again sure sure so i just always made sure i stayed the course you know that that comes off that comes off i'm gonna tell you why because before we started the episode i was telling you because you're 29 yeah yeah, but to be honest with you the the way you carry yourself over the years and from what i've seen just your wisdom your knowledge you could be thirty nine. Thank you, man. No, no, because you are you carry yourself like an older, mature dude Very much that right. has been around. Meanwhile, you've done a lot of things, and you're only twenty nine years old. Yeah, it's a blessing, man. Um, I think it's because I, I would like to tell anybody that's listening, you know, um, your interests. I, I, you eventually end up running into what you're interested in, and I was interested in a bunch of guys who were just like very mature, like Jay Z, Eminem, DMX. Nelly, them dudes were the shit to me. And I, I really researched them guys because I was familiar with young rappers because I'm from New Orleans. So we had the hot boys where BG and them dudes sure. were young, like 19, 18, 16. I'm seeing them pull up in Benzes, stretch PT cruisers. And I kind of related to it so much. I kind of wasn't growing from it. Like I was a hot boy. You feel me? Like I sure. just felt like they were kind of like my family members. But then when I got hip to like Jay-Z and Nelly and I seen the age at what they were doing, what they were doing was like 25, 26, 27, you know, like Jay-Z volume one and volume two really pushed me into like a whole different sphere of living. It just made me mature and just was like, nah, I don't. New Orleans was just known for partying, you know what I mean? And just party, party, party. There was nobody in the city who was just like telling you how to get money. You was just seeing them get money and just spend it and party and shit like that. But you never had anyone who I felt like was like Jay-Z that broke down to you like, you should hustle like this. You should stack your money up. You should do like this. You should do this. And I think I know Master P did it, but he didn't do it in record. He mm. kind of did it more in like interviews where he told you like, yeah, like I'm really hustling this. I'm really getting it out the mud. But Jay-Z really put it on the beat and it just stuck with me. And then Jay-Z really opened my ears to T.I. because I was into like typical Southern music where it wasn't really lyrical. It was just more energetic and, right. and more like straightforward like nigga this how i feel fuck you nigga fuck you juvenile like (laughs) the hook was nigga fuck you i feel just like you Mm. and then after listening to jay-z and i would hear him rap about scarface it opened me up to scarface who i was privy to but just from a ghetto boy stance not like a solo stance you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i just started listening to ti and i started listening to you know andre 3000 these guys who just i felt like had like a broader lyricism to them that was in the south that was kind of under the radar where now I feel like you have a bunch of that now. You know, you got like, you have a J. Cole, you have a me, you have a a Nick Grant. Mm -hmm. You know, you got these different guys where, you know, being lyrical, big crit, Mm -hmm. you know, who was kind of like a sacrificial lamb in his early days. But you know what's crazy about big crit? I think crit man is is, is so jazz and soulful. You know, uh, he reminds me a lot of like, like, like just a pimp too yeah 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 completely you know and um but i just feel like um i feel like he's underrated man i feel like people don't appreciate him enough man now look i want to say this um i just read something before i came in here that chance the rapper said and i've been saying it for a long time i just don't think i have a big enough platform to where he just said it in billboard but um he just said it he was like for me to continue thriving i need more people doing what i'm doing 
Mm. That's the same thing with Crit. I felt like that. We were like one of the two guys who were like making beats and rapping. You had like this soulful sound. We wasn't pressed for fame. We wasn't thirsty to like do shit like all extra and shit like that. And when you don't have a lot of that around, it doesn't draw any attention. Right. We're not coming back to back like how a Playboy Cardi and a Lil Uzi and all these sure. niggas, they coming back to back. We're coming sparingly like Kendrick drop, go away. J. Cole drop, go away. Chasing Cash drop, go away. Big Crit drop, then none of us on tour together. Right. All these trap niggas on the road together. Future lineup, every nigga that's trapping is on the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right. that to me is just like what Chance, I feel like Chance the Rapper is now finally like waking people up, I think because he doesn't necessarily have a typical sound with what the hustle he's going for. Like his music isn't necessarily like some just put it right in the club or just like some ignorant music you know what i mean right. but his hustle is similar just like everybody else who's just trying to get it and not give their money up to the man if they don't have to you know what i mean he's just trying to get it independent split it with his team that's the same thing that dudes in a trap trying to do and i just think now we're on a space where like you got guys who are able to like explain like you really have to explain sometimes what you're trying to get across and that's the thing i like about chance the rapper like he's very very intelligent and he's very well spoken mm -hmm. and it's not intimidating it's not in the sense where like i feel like jay-z kind of with hip-hop we can give like this intimidating thing like we trying to come get all the money and just take it all and leave right. nothing for nobody and chance the rapper's like nah like nah i'm, I'm not i'm not against you know i'm not saying i want to do it all on my own and i don't need y'all help he's just saying i just know capable people that i've come up with that I started with, that I know they're capable of doing high level business just as much as anybody else who've been sitting in these offices for 10 years or, or 10 months. You know, I know these people and they know me, so they should be working on my project. Someone shouldn't be working on my project just because they got a successful history and they don't know shit about me. Like, right. nah, and I really agree with that. I agree with that completely. You should have people around you working with you that know you not just know this business. But then so, so many people, I think, come, when you come up, you're coming up with a lot of people that are around you, so you come up, and eventually what happens is they become yes men, you know? True. That, that happens a lot. I mean, you hear so many stories of that, and I'm sure you've seen so many stories too. But even like, you know, look, even thinking about like Big Pun, you know, like um, amazing lyricist, amazing what he was able to accomplish, but no one could tell him shit. So he kind of appreciated people that were yes men around them because he yeah. really wasn't going to listen to what the fuck you were going to say anyway. Some, I feel like, you know, um, yes men, yes men can be even be no men. You know what I mean? Sometimes you probably need somebody to just, you just ask them something and they just tell you what you want to hear just so you can hear it outside of your head. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes I need to hear somebody say something that I've been thinking just to get a second opinion on on my son, like, nah, I'm tripping. You know what I mean? Like, nah, let me, I'm tripping. Like, right. I just needed to hear that out of somebody. It, it didn't sound as good as the idea coming from him. It may, I just might have been feeling myself too much. That's where hip hop is. Hip hop is in the space of feeling himself too much. That's where you get these, like, these quote unquote yes men, because, like, what the fuck is a yes man at the end of the day? <laughs> like, he can tell you, he can tell you, he can tell you he's feeling that, but you still got to execute it at the end of the oh, day. Oh, of, of course. But when you grew up with people, and especially, you know, hip hop, you know. Uh, I feel like hip hop is full of yes men now. Well, well, keep in mind, keep in mind, right? Friendly people. I feel like most of the rappers are yes men. Yeah. No, but keep in mind, keep in mind, right? Hip hop is evolving, right? right. So, so. You know, hip hop. When we talk about people who 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 imagine, you know, that that just love to to spit and rhyme and and, and do what they do. Never imagine going on tour. Never imagine all this stuff that happened. You know, like when we think about like you know the 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 pioneers of this shit, and and how much money was there to be made. Because yeah, 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 yeah. remember, for a long time, hip hop was just a fad. Yeah, yeah. People were like, nah, this really can't happen. Then think about it. When it becomes this multi million dollar business, so you come in with people that are friends. So you come in with. People who may be, you know, fucked up. People who may be drug dealers. People who may be, you know, you come up with people that are your homeboys. And everybody's not A, A plus clean. You know what I mean? So the point I'm trying to make is, like, when you come up with people like that, people then um, appreciate what you're doing. You're getting it. So they protect you at all costs. And, and you know, a cost they're going to, when I say yes, man, is because they're going to, you know, agree with you because they don't want to lose that, that the loyalty. But yeah. more importantly, they're getting a check. Yeah, yeah. They're living. 
what you're doing is making them live. How are they going to argue with you? They could be off the team and they could be off that payroll. Yeah, yeah. And uh, look, I'm 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 a firm believer in don't bite the hand that feeds you. That's why a, a great leader is a leader that can humble himself and learn through the people he's around. And if you got yes men around you and you see that people take to you like that and you see that they'll ride for you and go off you everywhere, you just got to, you know, keep that in mind. You know what I mean? I keep that in mind. I do know that I have some guys who will do anything that I'll say. And I keep that in mind to not just tell them anything willy nilly. I think before I speak because I know that I have a, a great amount of influence over them because I you know when I go back to the city man you know shit I tweet I see dudes they really come up to me be like yo man I see you tweet that shit I really hollered I, w I really went to that studio and got some studio time dog thank you for that you know what I mean and that's what that's what really you know to go back on like when we were speaking before we got on air about you know like being positive you know what I mean all the time and taking this I grew up being a jokester, man. We got this shit called Ribbon in New Orleans where it's like it's like Dirty Dozens if you are familiar with and live in color. It's yeah. basically just roasting a nigga all day long. That's what we do. That's how even we show love to you. Like a, That's like how we show endearment. Like the, somebody will see you in the morning like, boy, what your ugly ass doing? <laughs> and if you don't have a certain type of personality where you could take that and just be like, this person told me something because they fuck with me. They didn't tell me this because they don't fuck with me. You know what I mean? You'll be confused. And I come from a city where people poke fun at you to keep you on your square, not to mm, really push mm, you off of it. Because right. it's fucked up already. It's fucked up all around so, you. So, so, so the shit well, is really you keeping that? you alive. But you know why what you say mean? that? For people who don't know, why is it fucked up all around you? Um, New Orleans is just a place where it's just poverty stricken. You know what I mean? It just Hurricane Katrina hit, you know, finances. Um, always just but been even something. before Katrina, you grew up mom and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, what they do for a living? My mom is a ophthalmic technician, which is basically the woman that checks your eyes and puts the eye drops in your eyes okay. and tells you your prescription. And my dad works at the shipyard building ships, so he's the guy with the big map and tells you where the pipes go and this, that, and do and you know USS Bob Hopes and everything the jets land on that's what my pops did he just recently retired so they got it out the mud you know what okay, i mean they okay. went to school you know what i mean started off at probably twenty five thousand and worked all the way up now and but just beyond that you know like even my parents like my parents they come from big families and you know i just think we had something passed down to us fucking genetically or spiritually to where we would rather give each other a hard time before life would give each other give us a hard mm. time. So if 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 it don't get no worse than me and I'm your family, life will never rattle you. And right. I swear to God that shit has made me the best of a person. Because when I went through Hurricane Katrina, I went through that shit like it was nothing. Where I seen a bunch of other people just falling down to the waistline. I just looked up and was like, man, this is an opportunity for me to change my life and not be a typical ignorant N.O. nigga that everybody think I'll possibly be because I'd be stuck down here. So I took a, a flight. I went to Los Angeles. I met a bunch of people who heard me with an N.O. accent. The first thing out their mouth is like, yo, bro, you, you know Lil Wayne? <laughs> but the craziest shit was if I would have stayed in New Orleans, I would have got no sympathy, no empathy. When I left. It was like since I was just a real enough nigga to get the fuck up out of there, people just showed me love off the rip. Like, damn, you got to be strong as hell to leave New Orleans in the midst of this and come to Hollywood and want to do music for a living. And then I press play on the music and the music wasn't whack. <laughs> and it was just like it was like a match made in heaven. T take us through, uh, you know, Hurricane Katrina. Like, wh where were you when that happened? I was, um, okay, so the the days leading up into the impact day, I was in the city. So it happened on, like, August 25th, August 26th. Um, I graduated high school in May. So just after that period, I was literally just thinking about what my future was. Was I going to go to college and pursue sports or was I going to go pursue music? August rolls around. I'm like, you know, teetering on the line of just being like, you know, I really fully want to do music. The storm is coming days before. They're saying, you know, but like. But did you know how serious it was? Like, Yeah, everyone knew. But knew this the is the was thing. Break. Nah, we didn't know that part. You didn't, okay. Because we've had category four and five storms before. My mom, everybody's parents grew up talking about like these Hurricane George and Hurricane Camille, which was hurricanes that's just known to fuck the whole city up and wipe it out and start over again. But there was never a point where, like, the water stayed that long. This was the first time where, like, the water stayed that long. And that's because they had blew the levees up and shit like that. Mm. And this was just a, a culmination of, like, gentrification. You feel me? It was, like, perfect timing to, like, tear the projects down. It was already tearing the projects down. But they was running into, like, a timing thing of, like, trying to speed it up. Mm. 
with like moving people and shit like that and getting people then when all the hoods started combining in one area they started killing construction workers they started killing each other it was just it was just chaos so the flood was like the perfect opportunity to be like all right cool we can shut this shit down we can get everybody up out of here and we can do what we got to do and that's what it was so the the rain wasn't the bad part we dealt with that before we under sea level everybody got flood insurance people knew to leave and some who didn't leave they just had kerosene hurricane lamps everybody did that before nobody dealt with the fact of like being in the city and you can't get nothing like literally like imagine going to the gas station and people are at the pump like trying to siphon gas like or people on you ever seen walking dead <laughs> well i just started watching walking dead and i'd be and i'd be like yo this shit remind me of katrina uh -huh. they had a point where they was like siphoning the gas out the cars mm -hmm. and shit that's what motherfuckers was doing during hurricane katrina bro it was cars on the side of the road they was breaking in the gas station the arabs who owned the gas station they they wouldn't sleep in their house they were sleeping in their gas station strapped up because they knew people were coming in there looting everything taking all the, taking all of this shit it was really? literally like resident evil bro Wait, it was, was, the smell up? the smell was like resident evil yeah they were strapped up people were laying in their house people who lived in like quote-unquote gated communities gotta remember they were they like they had alarm systems on them but there was no power so if somebody broke in your fucking crib you didn't have no alarm to go off and let you know what was going on so it was men like they were sending their wives and kids off but like the men were staying home, sleeping in their trucks, sleeping in the driveway, sleeping in the crib, strapped up, making sure people didn't come loot because you had people who left at a like last minute. They left everything behind safes, jewelry, oh China, God. all type of shit. You feel me? This shit worth thousands of dollars or probably all you got family photos, this and that. I know people who I grew up with. They don't got a picture. Think of that mm. from and they was born in 85. <laughs> they don't have a photo sad from their childhood up to 2005 now did you lose your grandmother in uh, yes yeah i lost my grandmother not in the storm but like during the process during the aftermath we were trying to get my mother to a hospital she was she ended up having liver cancer and ended up having this thing called yellow jaundice if you're familiar with that yellow jaundice is like this shit where like your liver basically kind of like start leaking in your blood and your like eyes the, get yellow. yeah yeah you know you turn yellow period oh. that's the like most people when they get it their eyes turn yeah. yellow my grandmother got it so bad she literally turned golden oh my god but and but the the wildest shit about it my grandmother kind of got like she got more vivid like 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 certain features on her started getting more pretty like her eyes got prettier her hands got prettier her like her face got prettier like is like where she was where she was losing life the other parts where i guess she could like speak and touch Again. that's like where that's where she was gaining life so she like she had pretty ass hands you feel me where she could like hold my hand and hold my mom hand and like pretty face and pretty eyes and i just watched my grandmother literally deteriorate in front of me i would be making beats in one room and i go lay with my grandmother in another room and um i was staying in mississippi during this time because we couldn't go back to new orleans the city was shut down and yeah my grandmother passed that was like the key motivation you know what for i mean you, you, yeah to just to like bounce yeah just like to get away from this because it was so intense my mother took it like a g you know what i mean me and my dad we moved back home we had to do some repairs on the crib then um the city did a fucking curfew and you couldn't do shit you basically mm. had to be inside by fucking sunfall which was like five o'clock and there was just military roaming all over the place and i really felt like i was in prison Mm -hmm. I felt like I was in prison. There was no street lights. You couldn't do nothing. No cable. And all I had was a cord triton. And I would just be on a cord no triton. Wi -Fi? No, this was Wi-Fi. This is before Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is 05. Did they have Wi-Fi back then? No. Nah, it was I like mean, DSL yeah, cable modem days. Yeah. 28.8K. 28 28 <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, no, nah, this was back then. Wi-Fi was on like the plug that plugged okay, in the back okay, of the Mac. Okay. Remember they like used to have a little cord? Yeah. No, nah, they used to have like a little piece. That went in the back of the Mac. But long story short, yeah, I just felt in prison and I just told my dad, I told my mom, I was like, yo, I'm bouncing. I had saved up some money. I had got Foot Locker to relocate me to Mississippi. Okay. And I was working at Foot Locker, so I was saving up money. Then I came back. When they opened the first Foot Locker and Foot Action, they in, in the mall, they were tag teaming because you couldn't get enough stock. So yep. they were basically sharing stock. It was like Foot Action, Foot Locker collab. So some of them were wearing gray shirts. We wearing striped shirts. Damn. It was, I had never, and that's, that was like the start of New Orleans coming together. 
mm. because there was like so much shit that was just fucked up and like think of like half of the city's population leaving literally like where we maybe had 400,000 people we literally had like 100,000 people in the mm. city if that so it was nothing left for you to do but to come together um you would run into people that you were probably beefing with before Katrina we had to go to FEMA camps to get water and right. get and get R RMEs like them food like them little army meals and shit like god bless man y'all don't know about eating fucking army meals for a month yeah <laughs> and no, it's go sad, and get man. your bath it's, water from a, a fucking sad. army camp you feel me and shit like that this is shit i'm speaking on for the first time you know what i mean like i really had to eat I, mres that's what they're called and pouring water on the damn food and oh it was crazy man having to eat them shits for a good minute going to fema camps with my mom just trying to get medicine and clean water and gauze or fucking toilet paper anything of that nature you know what i mean you could not go to no store you had to wake up early as fuck and go line up in military camps and get that shit issued to you and then they had times and locations where you had to go and line up and you had points where you could go they you had to go get clothes we didn't have clothes i stayed in a i stayed in a motel with my parents me in one room and then my parents in another room sometimes if it was available and then sometimes if there wasn't availability we had to all cram in one room luckily my where my dad is from it's a small town. My family is pretty known up there. My cousin used to be a big football player and he dated a he dated a girl whose family ended up owning like a motel and they remembered my cousin. They remembered our family and it was like, oh, we remember your nephew. He was so good to us. Their daughter ended up getting like ended up becoming paraplegic and my cousin yeah. stayed with her. Mm. for a long time you feel me until she passed away and shit like that they was like no we got you this is our way we can pay you back and they took us in and let us stay in a fucking that, motel that goes to show you that good karma man comes right. back around man you know it's funny because it's like you know again you know hurricane katrina and the aftermath is so sad to hear and so many things i think us as individuals take for granted that people you know like yourself like, it's funny one thing i do give you credit for is man you never gave up man yeah no nah, never pe that. people complain today about you know uh, i mean let's say uh, people complain about anything i'm born on 9 11 bro really i don't know i couldn't i can't complain you yeah. know what i mean people bounce back from that yeah. you know what i mean and um it's crazy man you know i just think and then i'm a virgo and every virgo i've i've been told you know we kind of get told we kind of like some will call us cold hearted, some will call us nonchalant, some will call us unbothered. I just call it composed. You know, it'd be so much shit happening in life that'll rattle you. I just be trying to make it through. I just be like, nah, like I'm good. Nah, you never gave up, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You know and what and I mean? you know what? We'll get to it. But when you um, when you moved to LA, which you got the fuck up out of there, yeah, 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 you, know, you yeah. picked up and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through who you met and, and how you started to find your career. But one thing I like is I, I remember you saying that, you know, first deal that you did you want to give him money to mom and dad yeah 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 getting them off yeah because you know pops pops wasn't playing that you know but more importantly you just wanted to give them something yeah no nah, but and no nah, but more no nah, most importantly pops wasn't playing that mm. like look the co topic of conversation right now on the internet is like this this kid who plays for ucla lonzo ball and his dad lavar ball okay speaking so highly talking about how he won a billion dollar shoe deal for his kids and this and that and people are trying to say like damn like how you gonna talk like that you know you kind of putting pressure on your child or putting burden on your child my dad coached me from the time I was five years old. I was a quarterback. I was a pitcher. I was a center fielder. I was a point guard. So all I know is my dad feeding me information to see me do good and win. Right. Not to be like no docile, just like, that's my son. I just want to make sure you okay. Like my, like, like my mother has maternal instincts to nurture me for that side. My dad just pushed, put information in me and energy and spirit in me to be like, yo, you can get that done. And when you go get it done, you're going to do it the right way. Period. Point blank. My dad did the same thing. My dad left Mississippi, moved to New Orleans. When he started getting a job, he started sending money back. Mm. I know homies who have moved from fucking Lebanon or fucking the Middle East to come over here, to come to New Orleans to start up a restaurant. They do the same thing. They send money back home to get their homies over here or just to take care of their people. I think a lot of times it's a foreign concept in the hood for niggas to do that because we just been taught to stunt so much. You know, and what I mean? we don't know who to send it back to. Like they don't, we don't understand the concept of taking care of someone outside of completely what's going on in our 
own little worlds. Or evolving and, yeah. and, and having people, uh, you know, uh, benefit off of what we're doing. Yeah. Too. Right. Yo, you said something one time, like I said, we're organized chaos here. We'll go back and forth. But but uh, trust me, the internet will know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> you you said something with the surf club, who is... is yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 me and Hitboy. You and Hitboy. You said something like, I think you said you created that just so people could you know use that as a reference like meaning i forgot how you said it but like you you said like you know some people create things for only their well-being you said something like you created something like oh that. nah yeah look so other I, people can have an example yeah no nah, everything i'm doing look um my career in general like um i kind of molded it after pharrell when i saw pharrell doing what he was doing i just felt like it was just so different from what the average black male was doing in the hip-hop scene you know they just wanted to be so aggressive or they just wanted to be so fucking money driven and uh, and he was like more of a skater was, yeah type. he was just like humble first video i seen he was riding a bicycle and then he had a scene <laughs> with girls all over him i was like oh shit you could ride a bike and get girls because i'm riding a bike right now yeah. in, in, in middle school high school and that was dope to me you feel me it was something he made being a superstar accessible to me, mm. where for a long Correct. time, yeah, being a superstar was just like, you got to have this type of car, you got to have this type of this, this type of this. And it was like, nah, like I'm into different shit, you know what I mean? Or I'm into like making shit cool. I'm into making things cool. And Pharrell showed me that perspective. And then he also introduced this whole thing with like taking something that has like a stigma that black people will not fuck with. And then getting black people to fuck with it. No one wanted to be a nerd if you were black. Mm. Right. N-E-R-D. No one ever really dies. It just stuck me. I was like, oh, shit. I'm, I'm a nerd. I, I'm a nerd now. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> I never Look, bro, I could not tell you a Star Trek episode or Star Wars yeah, episode. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I'm doing all of this because of Pharrell. Yeah, right. yeah. And he's doing it because of Spock because he really knows that. Yeah. That goes to bet what you said, the beneficial, the benef uh, being someone benefiting off your evolution. Yes. I, I benefited off of Pharrell's evolution. He benefited off the evolution of Tribe Called Quest. So I am Q-Tip. I am Pharrell. I'm all of them mixed with the Hot Boys and Master P and Birdman. And that's that's what made it easy for me to embrace Drake and ASAP Rocky. Because yeah. that's what when I saw Rocky and everybody was like. How the hell is he sounding like Bone Thugs? I'm like, he was born in like fucking 1990 when Bone Thugs was hot, yeah. probably smoking hot. He was right. a fucking kid listening yeah. to that shit. And I, I don't, I don't try to get people to assimilate to things that other people think they should. Like, you show me your interest. Once you show that to me, I'm gonna encourage you to the exp to express that to your fullest potential. You know what I mean? Whether you sign to a major or you're not signed to a major, we just need. I feel like we need an overhaul in creative expression out here. That's why I love Swiss Beats, man. To me, Swiss Beats and Pharrell, they opened the door for me. Because those guys aren't just typical producers where they just used to try to keep you behind the board. Or they used to just think you was going to be like irritating like Diddy. <laughs> like, it's just like, no, I'm not going to be that. It was kind of like, that's all people thought you were like. If if you were a producer, you were either going to just be like this quiet guy that made the beat or you're going to be like this take that, take that. You take know what over. I mean? Trying to be, yeah. yeah, trying to be in the spotlight. And it's like, no, nah, man, like I'm on some Swiss Beats and Pharrell shit. Like I know when to be in the front and I know when to be in the back. Yeah, I know definitely. who should be in the front at this time. I know who should be second. And I, I'm not trying to take credit for Mastermind and everything. I just want everybody to benefit off of it. You feel me? Uh, they, they were coaches. They were coaches yeah, and players at the same and time. And I come from a sports background, so I think that's what makes me makes it so, so easy for me. Let's get right let's get right into it. You moved to LA, you know. Um what what came first? You met Hit Boy? Or no, no, I moved to I moved to, I moved to LA and I end up uh I was working with a kid who was from Connecticut. I had met him. He was going to this music school and he ended up being friends with Diana Ross's two sons. Really? Yeah, Evan and Ross. And that was kind of like my introductory to, you know, kind of like moving around. So I started getting in different studios and shit like that around there, record plant, Larrabee. Long story short, this guy, he ended up like flunking out of school and couldn't continue his music career. So he ended up leaving me stranded somewhere. Um, MySpace days, a kid by the name of Sean Kingston makes a bulletin post. If people remember MySpace of bulletin course, post, course, yeah. he made a bulletin post looking for beats. Um, I end up, um, sending some to him. He ended up liking him. He told me like, yo, we should link up. Hit boy 
Hap, I don't. I don't know Hit Boy at this time. Okay. Right. He I don't think many the, people. You know, he look sees more the, niggas in Paris. Yeah, he sees the same bulletin and he responds to it. Time passes. I'm. I, I by this time I've linked up with Sean Kingston and like he goes through this email and I hear this beat and it's sampling Bob Marley Concrete Jungle and it's fucking fire. And at the beginning it goes Hit Boys. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And he plays some more beats and they're just crazy. Sean Kingston ain't feeling them like that. He's feeling some of them, but not really. So I just sent a, e I sent a message to him. I'm like, yo, dog, I'm hearing the beats you just sent to Sean Kingston. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, yo, I live in um, I live in the Inland Empire. Where you at? I'm like, I live in Hollywood. He's like, I got a studio we can link up. I could come pick you up tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. The hit boy literally drove out from where he was living at, which is called Fontana, the Inland Empire. Um, drove out to pick me up. I went out there. We get to the house. And when I walk in the crib, it was kind of like deja vu, man. Like he had the computer set up and a keyboard set up exactly the same way I produce. He was running mm. a keyboard into Fruity Loops, into a computer, the exact way, through an aux cord, everything. And the first thing out of my mouth was like, wow. I was like, yo, you use Fruity Loops? He was like, yeah, man. So we just sat and talked for a while. I had brought a drive with me with some sounds on it. And Hit Boy was real dope at playing keys because he had came from working with like the underdogs and shit like that, the R and B producers. Right. He was around them. So his style was more R and B rap. My style was more like rap, but I could like do experimental like Neptune Timbaland okay, type okay. R and B shit, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Um when we got together, that shit was literally like Pharrell and Chad, man. And that, be and, and that became the Surf, surf Club. Surf Club, straight yeah. up, yeah. But why the Surf Club? They had, funny story, they had the Surf Club name before I came. It was him, Brandon, and Chili Chill. Okay. They were just on some different shit wearing Hollister clothes, bro. Okay, and okay. Hollister used to have this shit that had Surf Club yeah, on it. Yeah. And it was like this kind of like Neptune style, like preppy look. It was like a way of like kind of wearing like Ralph Lauren or like okay. CDG type yeah. of clothing, but it was like a lower price point. Yeah, Surf Club, you know, it's funny because... I just thought the name was dope. So it is Because dope. I didn't surf. It, it, no, I, I, you know what I mean? still wavy. Thank you. They didn't yeah. know about Max B. See, I knew about see, Max I, B. See, when I grew up, Surf uh, Surf Club was uh, definitely Ocean Pacific for me. You know? Like, meaning like... Anything yeah, OP it, clothes, for anything sure. Was, yeah, anything to do with surfing yeah, was yeah, Ocean yeah. Pacific. But um, now, nah, you know, it's funny because it's like when we think of Surf Club and then so many people, especially in hip-hop, they hear how Drake... You know, shout you out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talks about you know Chase from the Surf Club. Yeah, you know? yeah. He was an original member, low key. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, back. it's funny because you, you sp before we even get to Drake, actually, what's what stay Sean Kingston let you stay in his house? No. Yeah, no, yeah. He let me stay in his crib until I got my spot. Uh, that's how I met Smoke Dizza. Smoke Dizza was fucking working with fucking high tech and Sean Kingston. Really? Like, yeah, man. So Shouts to Dizza. Yeah, man. I met Dizza. That's my guy. Uh. That's where the line comes from with Drake back when we would smoke good in the Oakwoods. We would stay in the Oakwoods in Burbank, which is now, like what these else apartments. He, what else were we talking about when he says the change used to fall? What was that line? When I was wild and retarded with mad girls coming through the house. <laughs> <laughs> I just used to like, I was when I was in Hollywood, I was in Hollywood and not being like a fake person, but just being somebody that was energetic and then coming from New Orleans, I had such a drive to get it. I felt like I needed to know everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I was still the same person I was in, but I just used to have a lot of people around me that I didn't need around me, like just a kind of almost like an open door policy. And you, you know, just not with dudes, but like, you know, just like really you could come by if you was the homie or you was a girl, you could come kick it. That's just what it was. And at that time, I don't think there was I'm not going to say because I know a lot of real L.A. guys who were doing what I was doing 10 times over. I just think I was this random guy who hit the scene who was just doing it like I lived in L.A. And mm, I just got so yeah. comfortable and so acclimated so easily. And I think that's because I never tried to claim L.A. I never tried to claim L.A. I never tried to make it seem like I was from there. Everybody I ever ran into, I gave them the utmost respect. I kind of treated it like I was like on a fucking foreign. Ex I was a foreign exchange student. <laughs> Everyone I came across was teaching me something. Right. I just never wanted to step out of line and, and play myself. So... It all worked out, man. And then like Drake turning out to be what he uh, is, and so so with Ben Baller too, man. Shout out Ben Baller was a big dude, man. Ben Baller was a key element in like kind of me getting my name up. Like he never was shy about showing me love. He met me. He thought I was just like this genuine dude. I knew my shit. And Ben Baller just always was just like, yo, fuck with Chase. Like he gonna be the shit one day. And he 
he told me his story about how he used to be in music and he would he told me he was like yeah he was like he was like your story is interesting just don't ever give up you know what i mean like whatever you do you're around the right people you know you know drake you know this person that person he was like don't ever be jealous of anybody just keep doing what you're doing that's the key yeah nah and, and ben baller man real talk he really gave me like a lot of game that i that i hold on to now you know ben, ben is definitely an organic dude you know and one thing i really always appreciate about ben is that you know, if 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 he believes in something, man, he takes that shit to the to the moon and yeah, back, yeah, yeah. man. So you know, definitely shout out to Ben. Uh, you know, I just like the way he's always carried himself. His story is dope, just like yours. But also, you know, just like he's evolved too. Yeah, you know, yeah. He, he's pushing being a family guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's authentic. He's yeah. organic, man. And, and, and love him or hate him, he's authentic. Yeah, That's what I like. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but but so Sean, Sean, you're at Sean Kingston's house, right? Yeah, yeah. Then where did you go from there? How did you meet Poe? Um, through Hit Boy. Okay. Um, well, both of us. Polo had contacted me through MySpace because at, uh, during this time on MySpace, I was like one of the popular guys with beats. I used to be throwing beats up on MySpace, and they would get a lot of plays. P who, and people used to hit you up for beats on MySpace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who? Fucking, you name it. A lot of guys who basically rapping now. You know, like um, even guys just in and uh, in who A and R, like guys like folk who work with Jeezy. Okay, like yeah. it was like a bunch of guys, like even Justice League. Like we were kind of in touch with each other from like they used to have these message boards back in the day, like rapmusic.com and allhiphop.com and 365hiphop.com. Mm. You know, uh, school of, uh, school of uh, uh, hip hop. You know, all these sites. I was like kind of familiar with guys. You know what I mean? And then we eventually started evolving, and then we just started crossing paths. So Polo was like looking for talent he had just got a label deal with interscope he had rich boy and he was working on rich boy's album he had reached out to me because he wanted to buy a beat he didn't end up buying it and then when me and hit boy met hit boy brought up in conversation he was like yo i got this guy he he's thinking about signing me i think uh, we should make some beats together and maybe he could sign both of us That's dope. and i was like yeah hit boy's never been a hater love him to death never been a hater um I was like, word. I was like, what's his name? He was like, man, Polo the Don. I was like, okay, he actually hit me up too, but I've never talked to him. Hit Boy was actually talking to Polo. He had got a keyboard from the nigga and everything. Like, he, they had met before. So, we made some beats. We started sending them. We would send individuals, and then we would send collab beats. Polo would hear the beats, and he just started responding. He was just like, yo, like, y'all are getting better. Da -da -da -da. Hit Boy was just like, yeah, you know, I just started working with this kid chasing cash. He's dope. When Polo found that out, he was like, oh, shit. He was like, y'all working together? I'm going to be out there for Rich Boy's album mixing and shit like that. I want y'all to come through. He comes out for Rich Boy's album. We're in Chalice Studio. Me and Hit Boy go through. We press play on a bunch of beats. Polo's just like, man, I want to sign y'all. That was that. <laughs> and then he fucking made it happen. And Polo was, was I mean, so listen, Polo, Polo was hot, man. Polo was running Zone 4 with the guy who manages Mike uh, Mike Will now, okay. DJ Moore Mealy, yep. who's like the head of Columbia or whatever label he's at right now. Now, I asked you uh, off air, but um, I haven't heard, you know, about Polo, you know, for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. Where has he been? He's still out here. He's in Atlanta. If y'all ever pull up, y'all might come find him in a pink pony if y'all, <laughs> if you're into that type of shit. That's where he used to be. But he's still in an A. He produced a, a kid by the name of like Kane Brown, I think, who had a a number one country record recently so um one thing about polo to don is he's always working i got nothing but ultimate love and respect for him for putting me in the game and never talking bad on me never you know trying to stop my bread you know just i think really that's put important. us in the game I think that's man. important especially in the industry because i feel like people just see each other act like everything's cool but then like behind like you know closed doors with a couple of people like ah man fuck that motherfucker yeah yeah nah it'll never be that for me it'll never be that for me with DJ more merely it'll never be that for me with Polo um life is phases man you know uh I, I didn't have any personal relationship with him outside of the fact that he was a believer so yeah, yeah. you know I man I could never fault that man in believing in me he didn't know me from nothing he just heard a fucking beat I made and he was just like I they gonna be something and mm. he was the one who was going around saying like yeah they gonna be the next neptunes like they like he for real that's timberland like they gonna be next up and yeah. you know he was not wrong <laughs> if you want to really well look at it hey listen then you and hit boy uh get together and start making some fucking hits yeah, you know yeah, you know yeah. what you know what uh, uh pun intended let's take a quick break and, and we'll be right back and uh roll up them backwards Holla. um <laughs> get some pineapple coconut juice uh, together anything else that you get missus some snacks some thin mints out of the freezer 
Go get some fruit because it's daylight savings is already in effect. Summer is coming and you don't want to be the fat girl because fat girls die alone. So go snack on some air and just sip on some water. There you go. Listen, yeah. and we'll be right back. Internet, don't go nowhere. Be right back. Cheer. Internet, we already told you that this episode was brought to you by Bevel. And I'm telling you, Bevel is, continues to take the industry by storm. I wish I see them in Target, Miss Wissa. Mm-hmm. Nothing's of it's all sold out. Everything. Very, very few items in there. Listen, go to getbevel.com forward slash Pete. If you don't know Bevel, it's a premier razor. It helps reduce bait razor bumps, it helps clean, keep That's your face right. clean. And let me tell you something. For me, that thing is so smooth when I do it. Like I, when I shape up my beard, official. And the shaver, you already know Nas. Man, Nas already told you. That signature fade is with the bevel blade. That's a major key. So don't play yourself. Go Get to, that bait. Go to getbevel.com forward slash Pete. Check out what they have to offer, discounts, and their products today. Shave smarter. Internet, we told you before, and we're going to tell you again. The College of Hip Hop app is official. Okay, they mess with us. We want you to mess with them. That's right. We don't mess with no fuck shit. Okay, College of Hip Hop app is something where you can learn. It's like going to school with the College of Hip Hop. You want to learn about anything that has to do with contracts. You want to learn about publishing. You want to learn about just exclusive interviews that All they have. All your questions are going to be answered in this one stop shop. It's an app. And one thing I like about them too is there's two kids from Detroit. And just like being young entrepreneurs, really, you know, uh, creating a platform. So I'm telling you right now, and moving forward, I want to create things of people that, that 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 you know are like-minded, man. That want to create dope shit, you know, and 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 you know, just like jump out there and, and and do things that you know for the culture, man. That's right. So listen, check out the College of Hip Hop app, download it, check it. You know, just give it a chance, see if you like it, man. Tell them the Premium Pete Show sent you. That's right. You're gonna like it, and you're gonna fix your lives today. Go download that app. Now let's get back to the show. Cheer. Ow. Internet and we're back. We're sitting here with the one and only Chase motherfucking K. He's yeah, chasing man. that paper. Yo, that's yeah, a, let me tell you something. That's a dope name because even people who don't know top you. Top five, top five. Yo, let me tell you something. Even people who don't know you. Like I was telling a couple people, like, yo, I want to have my homie chasing cash on. They're like, I don't know who that is, but that's a dope fucking name. <laughs> you think about it because even the way you put it, it's like Chase, C-H-A-S-E. N. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to spell it like a real name. Um, you want to know who and inspired it? And again, C A. My inspirate my inspirations are James Bond and George W. Bush. Why is that? Wait, what? James Bond because multiple people played James Bond and you still know his name. Mm. Like it was at one point it was Pierce Brosnan and then it was Sean Connery and then different people, but you still get the same vibe. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I wanted to go through with like chasing cash. Like I wanted to give off more like a persona than more or less than like people trying to do everything I'm doing. Like I want you to do you, but I still, you know, you feel like you can be James Bond and still be yourself. It's kind of like mm. you put the suit on or you like same way you become Batman. You know what I mean? You 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 put the suit on and you become that. Sure. I don't got a fucking you know, like six pack suit on, like fucking Superman or Batman. That's why I never was into like superhero superheroes. You know, nah, I mean? but you from New James Orleans, Bond. you got the bird chest out, Birdman. Classic. Good. Right here. I'm so glad y'all have her here. Yo, <laughs> she's, uh, she's a uh, fool, man. Yeah, that she nah. just said that. But um, yo, honestly, I'll be honest with you, for a long time, I always been a skinny, like, like we know. tall dude, like, or not tall, but not tall, no lie, decent size, decent size. No, no, no. I'll I let, always been afraid. To let my chest out, because I never forget, you know, you speak about how people were breaking on each other. Yeah, when yeah. I grew up, man, a lot of dudes I grew up with were either muscular or heavy, like fat. So, dude, when I used to take my shirt off, dudes were like, get that bird chest the fuck up out of here. So, I remember wearing a tank top, and I remember looking around, I'm like, damn, this tank top don't fit like it fits on everybody else, when man. you're skinny, you got to <laughs> keep jewelry tank on. Tank tops, condoms just don't fit like everybody else when you pee. <laughs> Hey, listen, condoms, uh, I don't worry about, you know. <laughs> Should but, be a little but, back here. But, but um, no, nah, no, nah, listen, bird chest, or no, you know what? But when as I get older, I said to myself, like, fuck it. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. You know what? Even I want to say, like, even like, like, yo, let me tell you something. Last week I was in uh, sitting down with my daughter in school at a college counselor. Let me tell you something. She's going to college uh, uh, in a year from now. My wow. brain was fucking blown by the amount of uh, information they gave me. But the point I'm, I'm, I'm making is as I'm sitting down there and just – thinking about what the fuck is going on she's talking about schools like i don't want to go to that school i know this one she's there i don't like her i don't want to go to this school you got too many people i don't like that i'm like yo what do you care about other people so the point i'm making is for years i cared about what the fucking people tell me about my bird chest yeah nah. now i just let that shit Look, bro. hang out yo honestly young generation a, needs to stop caring about what the fuck people i got a think big, of you i got a big chin bro mm. 
I used to get <laughs> called Jay Leno, Jay Cheno. Your chin is not even that big. Don't let them lie to you. Thank you. Now look, but that's what I'm telling you. Like when when you look good, they gotta pull whatever they gotta, ammo they got on you. They gotta yeah. pull out so that niggas ammo. Was on, I, man, nigga, crimson chin, all type of shit. I got teased and I too, just, guys. Me. I just bounce too. back with like my own killer jokes, or you just you just continue to be yourself fearlessly in front of people, and they just end up looking fucking retarded, cracking on you all exactly. the time. Exactly, and or, or or like in your case, you just never give up, man. You but know, yeah, if you have a bird chest on, keep a gold chain on. Well, get some pata and cover right. that shit up. You lit. Word, hey, shout out to Pata, man. I'm up here. I fuck with y'all shit, especially <laughs> the Carhartt collabs, man. I know y'all be sending P all and Pac send me Yo, some. Yo, Pete, man. he not. No, you ain't gonna get Pata nothing. Pete. You yeah, know what hey, mean? hey, listen, Pete people, about to change the whole name. Pete, Premium Pata. Pata Pete. Dot N L. Hey, listen, that's just family, man. From day one, man. I'm shout proud to, to see what they have done. Yeah, no, that's a great it brand, me, man. It took me 11 episodes to realize that Pete was like down with. That's a hold on every episode. God damn! Nah, that, that's a, he got all the collab. Yeah, can I get a, something? That's a Pete? strong brand. I, name. I mean, Pete I can, pops everything. tags every week. Shout out to Pete. No, nah, no, nah, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I'm not listening. I like believing in people. Listen, these guys from Pattern, man, I remember them coming here when they were starting their store, man. Uh, uh, you know, just coming to Brooklyn, really just, you know, embracing, uh, you know, the, the culture and then really just having to buy sneakers and buy stuff to go back there. And, and and now they don't need to do that because they became their own store, collapsed with everybody. I mean, listen, they became prestigious in what they do, man. And, and, and you know. You had a lot to do with that. No, no, there's a lot you of people. Some, Chris Vidal. Don't, don't, you know, no, no, um, no, no, no. You ain't going to do that. This is called the Premium P Show. This ain't the Chris Vidal no, show. No, no, no. Nah, real you talk, had you a lot to do with this. Thank no, you. No, Most talk. definitely. But, but um, no, nah, I like to do that like you. I like to really just do that for family, people that I consider that Appreciate I fuck it. with. Nah, yeah. man, you know, I want to let everybody know, you know what I mean? Like, you are a genuine dude, you know? You literally just saw me tweet that I was in New York and you reached out. You yeah, most I mean? definitely. Nah, and it's not that we're not in touch with each other, but that's literally what thing. one thing I want to do with my career, you know what I mean? Like, I want to continue to move on. Who's genuine with me? And let, let the business reflect on that. Like, the same way you hit me up, that's why I was saying, like, whenever you're ready, bro, I'll pull up. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. same way you had, the like, the inclination to hit me up, I have the inclination to show up for you. Sure. You know what I mean? Not push it back or delay it and be, like, on some shit. And um, I think that's what'll make the business better in hip-hop, period, man. When, when you have this g genuine shit in between it, it keeps a middleman out the way, and then everybody can fucking eat. You know what I mean? Yeah, most definitely, Do you man. feel like you being genuine and you being true to yourself is a hindrance in your career? Because yeah, everyone has yeah, to follow Yeah, 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 it's 50-50, you know what I mean? But I, I, don't, I don't think... I think it's a hindrance for me getting to people um, who I don't relate to. Okay. I think, you know what I mean? I think if... I, I don't think it's hindering uh, me from people who want to be... who want wisdom and want to be intelligent, you know what I mean? I just feel like... I just have a different approach. I'm trying to think of an artist at the time, even when I was listening to Jay-Z, who I used to listen to, who maybe not got a lot of shine. But, you know, I just used to listen to them all Fab? the time. I feel like Fab was underrated for oh, Me and time. Fab are great friends, and it's so funny we have conversations. And he is a person I always wanted to mold my career after because he is just good with everybody. Mm. Business personally he come to new orleans he walked the streets and he's a brooklyn dude too you know keep in mind uh, he's reason just why a solid person he's right. being like i've been with him in multiple states i've never seen anyone want to attack fabulous like hate like you a fuck nigga it like fab is the ultimate cool guy to everyone around the world you know i didn't think everyone of like that I'm every he's like literally everyone's favorite fucking rapper man literally on the low him and jada kiss they yeah. like the two coolest just, niggas ever i'm about to hug you because that was who i was going that's say what I, I would love to be like them that's what i, I, I want to sell 50 million but if i could really be like a uh, 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 og jada kiss fabulous niggas that stay fresh niggas that drop wisdom i want to do rick ross longevity. numbers yeah longevity but i want to do rick ross numbers you know what i mean like that's ideally what i want well, to have well, that impact but yeah fab and jada kiss man those are two dudes like i look at never slack off on a verse always relevant and can stay true to themselves and then you know adapt with the time and, and yeah and be a chameleon yeah, yeah 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 do you feel like you would have more longevity if you would just stick to like the producing no i feel like i wouldn't have any because what happens if i put out an album and then somebody else hot I need to have a beat on the hottest nigga album. That's why I'm right. right. <laughs> but well, yeah. you you did have an amazing beat, which you did with Hit Boy for uh, yeah, uh, Drop Wayne the world. and and yeah, Eminem. Drop the, the world. And then I did look what you done. But at the same time, I think the reason why people know my beats are dope is because I, th there's never a dry spell where you don't hear them. 
Yeah. You're going to hear a Chase and Cash beat, whether I'm rapping on them bitches or whether Drake rapping on them or whether Wayne rapping on them or whether somebody's going to be rapping on a Chase beat. Whether that shit hit the radio or not, I know people listen to everything that I do. I, I'm, this ain't even being cocky. Like, I know people are paying attention to me. So when I drop some shit, look, we ball for Dom Kennedy. Yeah. People mention that to me every day. It never touched the chart. Yeah. But people come to me every day and like, dog, that's one of the hardest beats I ever heard in my life. And niggas want to beat for me because of that. How did uh, Drop the World happen? Um, the beat started in a session that me and Hit Boy had with a writer. We were trying to come up with some shit for Rihanna. They didn't end up taking it. And then we just had the beat. Um, a guy by the name of KY who was engineering for Wayne. And he just engineers for a lot of people right now. KY engineer. I knew him just from being in Atlanta had mutual homies from kentucky uh i'm a fan of static major and they knew static mm -hmm. major they used to work with him so um he hit me one day he was just a fan of my beats he used to be in the studio hearing me make all the fucking beats and he was like yo dog you and hit boy got some shit y'all need to send me something i just started working with wayne on a young money album i was just sent them five beats and all five of them got used three of them went to the young money album and then two went to wayne one came out with uh wayne and eminem on it Man, that dropped the world, man. <clears throat> when you think about it, man, I was like, I mean, spins on radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how to be, I mean, you, had, you still got to be the, seeing the abs cat check for yeah, that. Yeah, nah, but, and the craziest thing is how big it is, and he was in jail. It's four times platinum, and he was in jail. People don't even remember that. He, we didn't even push the record because he was in jail. Mm -hmm. The Should label right, didn't push it. Nobody pushed it because he was in jail. Yeah, it was just like two icons getting on a record like i said goes back to my career not forcing anything like not really you know like shit i i believe if you're a believer shit is gonna be what it's gonna be i have ultimate faith in everything i do from the time i start the piano to like i mix it down in pro tools and i just think even with look do you do drums done, do you do drums uh, or, or hip boy does drums or that's just machine nah, it just depends no nah, it just depends on we both do everything like i can play keys and he could play keys i can do drums he could do drums because them there were on drums on one, drop the world no on both we did literally both like the the rock and roll part drums yep, yep. me and him did that together yeah and then i'm the guitar i did like the guitar and then the doom 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 the counter melody that's me the main melody and like the 808 and the snare and shit that's all hit boy and then like the whole structure of it is us together so anything with me and hit boy we literally did together even if he played every instrument and I or I played every instrument, the input was mutual. Right. Same as like Pharrell and Chad. Like Pharrell might make like how Pharrell when he he talked about how they did grinding. He made the whole beat, but like it took Chad to like sequence it and know right, what like part. You know here, what I mean? Yeah, like here. make this drop here and put right. this drop here and put the little the do, do, little ting ting part. Do, yeah, do, yeah, do, do, you know what I mean? Here. So that was yeah, our relationship. No. Now you placed beats with R. Kelly also? Yeah, that was like my initial placement. Uh, R. Kelly Double Up album. I did the title track Double Up featuring Snoop Dogg. Really? Which was amazing. Now let me tell you an interesting story about that. I would, I would love to meet R. Kelly and, and sit down with him and let him know that. Because at that time in my career, I was ghost producing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was working with this guy by the name of Ko, who was uh, signed to Grand Hustle, which is Ti's label at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he was working with R. Kelly, and he had I was sending him beats, and R. Kelly ended up picking a couple of them, but that was just the one that made the album. And the funniest shit is MTV interviewed R. Kelly when the album was coming out, and they asked him about that track because they was like, "Yo, that beat is hot, like." Who made it? R. Kelly was like, oh, I made that shit. <laughs> and I was, I was excited, though, because I was like, word, like, my shit is that hot that R. Kelly took credit for it. Like, I must be in the right direction. <laughs> I, I grew up listening to R and all of his music. So I, didn't, I never took it as any shade. I just felt like maybe if I keep going, doing what I'm doing, it'll lead me to one day possibly working with R. Kelly for real. I didn't take it as any diss, you know That's what I mean? That's good that you did that. Yeah, yeah, and I mean... Hey, listen, when you see him, like, well, R. Kelly, nice to meet you, but uh, I made that fucking beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I could. R. Kelly kind of crazy. He might There's get so aggressive if I tell that him that. Do that. Like, even now to this day, like, I have a friend that got signed by, like, a really notable producer. He got moved out to L.A. and everything, but he was just making beats for him to take credit for. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't advise that. But if if you don't care about, you know, um, being known, if you just care about hearing your music out and just the music, by all means, do that. Because there are some people who just love the music. Um, I have something to say. That's just Of me. course, of course. <laughs> What's the difference between Pro Tools and Fruity Loops? 
Pro Tools is where you record, and okay. Fruity Loops is where we make the beat. Okay. I thought you meant like cereal, Fruit Loops. I know. I bet ah. you did. <laughs> <laughs> and that Pro Tools, Al, shout out to the host. Yo, <laughs> she, that was pun intended for you. Whoa. Um, you worked on with Diddy on yeah, yeah, uh, Last yeah, Train yeah. to Paris. Yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. did that happen? Did he call you up? Um, Diddy, just being Diddy, um, being a guy with his ear to the street, heard about me and Hit Boy. We used to be in record playing a lot, had our names on the scooters and shit, and have our names on the door. And I had learned this theory from like Swiss Beats. I had heard that Swiss Beats used to like, when he made a hot beat, he used to leave the door open and let the whole studio hear it. <laughs> and I just found that to be so fucking funny. And that kind of happened for me and Hit Boy several times. I remember one time Hit Boy was playing a beat, Quest Love walked in the room. And then we would just be playing beats a lot of times and dudes would walk in the room. You know mm. what I mean? And Diddy was one of them guys. He had heard about us. He had an engineer, uh, the homie Matt. Shout out to Matt. Matt was a big part of that, you know, because Matt was a guy who always kept his ear to the street and shit like that. And he heard the beats. He liked it. He worked with us in Record Plant. And then he brought us out here to work in Daddy's house. That's when I got to meet Mario Wines and learn a lot about songwriting and, like, what, what makes a hook strong. And just also working with Diddy, I learned what it was like to work during the daytime. Mm. For a long time, I what do you mean at, by that? For a long time, I worked in music at nighttime, like uh, like a what I would four call or five a, in the morning, what six I, in what I would call an amateur, exactly. Like, but like with Diddy, he got shit to do, so he might have to really have an eight o'clock meeting in the morning. So he might have to have the session at twelve during the day and get you in there early. And you might you you can't be on no like working with Diddy and Bad Boy taught me how to be a professional. Honestly, not to say that. Pro polo didn't but polo just had a certain style where he was just like he was just 24 hours in the studio he just be in that bitch all day he had it booked out locked out so he could just show up whenever he would show up at 10 in the morning 8 in the morning 10 at night 2 in the morning mm -hmm. you know what i mean so but did he just having like a full schedule it just showed me like you go you could catch a vibe and you gonna have to make a vibe mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it ain't like it ain't no like if this is what you do even if you come and make some whack shit, Diddy would rather see you making some whack shit than being that bitch on the clock and not be doing nothing, feeling like you waiting on a vibe to come. Mm. Like you can catch a vibe by it's like starting a fire, basically. You know what I mean? You just you it might take you a while with some fucking sticks and it's harder than but, a but lighter. It's, it's gonna happen. But that's the process it takes to make fire. Or to, mag or to magnify glass. Period. Period. Yo, you know, you know what I like, um, and I heard this with very few people, but when you signed with Polo, I think Diddy was trying to sign y'all. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you signed with Polo, he wasn't mad. He was like, yo, all the best, you know, whatever you need, you know, I just, like, you know, and Diddy's the kind of person where, you know, he, he wants to grab the person. Man, funny shit is this. I think the reason why it worked out goes back to my energy and Hit Boy energy. Salute to Hit Boy for always being a dude that, like, when... When I was outspoken, never ran away from that. I feel like he knew I always had our best interests in mind. I just was always vocal about it. So we were signed to Polo, and Diddy came to fuck with us, and he wanted to sign us, and we was honest about it. We was just like, yo, we already fucking with Polo. Diddy was like, I, I respect y'all for telling me the truth. Right. I would like to manage y'all. We was just like, man, look, we already managed by DJ. He was like, cool. I still think y'all dope, and I want to fuck with y'all. I bring y'all to New York for a month, and y'all can just post up in Daddy's house, and I just want to show y'all how to produce and different things like that. And he didn't have, because when, when we let him know how we were operating, he knew how to operate with us. Wasn't no situation in there where we were just so thirsty to be with Diddy. We ain't say nothing. And then it led to bad business at the end of the day on the back end because we signed a polo, and Diddy trying to do some business with us. And then we like, oh, well, look, you got to talk to Polo because he got to clear it then diddy would have been like well i don't fuck with none of y'all no more right. so i never wanted to be in no situation like that where on the back end the business came to bite me in the ass because i know my music is hot i never mm. wanted nothing to keep my music from getting out there it's just like i'm gonna be honest about everything up front if you don't fuck with me because i'm fucking with polo it is what it is i just got to eat that bullet but diddy is a fucking businessman he was he's never gonna do anything stupid and i wasn't that special for him to be that stupid sure sure <laughs> have you seen him recently um, I think the last time I seen, I, yeah, I seen him recently in LA. I, I saw him briefly, like Grammy week. Question: mm. Is Mario Winans? Because I always wanted to know this. Is he one of the, like BB and CC? Is he one yes, of the Yes, yes, he is a Winans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He literally is. He's I just Mar met he's, um, CC. He, um, I think there's a big Mario. 
I think there's a big Mario. Oh, he's one of their sons. Yeah, I, he's not the son of BB or CC. Right, he's like not. a nephew or yeah, some man. shit like that. Uh, he Marvin. Marvin is his pop, Marvin or or some, he related That's to Marvin so or some shit okay. like that. You know, your story is crazy because when we look back at it, Sean Kingston brings you in his house. You know, young boy at the time start. You know, started his career. Yeah. Paul Odadon takes you under his wing, sign y'all in Hip Boy. Yeah. You, you know, you're a kid from New Orleans. I used to be in Diana Ross' house. Shout out to Diana, Diana Ross. Ross, right? <laughs> you're, you're a kid from New Orleans. Shout could, out to D-Ray Davis. D-Ray Davis, big really? homie. He's yeah. hilarious, Yeah, D-Ray too. Davis, one of the first niggas put me in a studio. Really? D-Ray. D-Ray Y'all lights can stick together. Yeah, man. D-Ray, I used to see D-Ray in a club, and we used to be capping on the same girls. <laughs> <laughs> and him just being a funny nigga, he used to always see me. He's like, man, young nigga, man, like, you got to stop this. And um, Was he forever wearing that U-neck t-shirt? To, man, know? look. Always looking like he didn't have no bread. Mm. D- that's D-Ray. Like, always looking like he had no bread, but always had money. Like, mm. just not one mm. of... A real Chi-Town dude. I don't okay. care, bro. Stay with the bread. Yeah, like, real Chicago dude. Like, all them dudes from Chicago, like, they're like that. Like if Kanye they, don't want to hear that. You don't say they, all they, of them now. Well, he, he, like, he had a flashy shit, but, like, the real OG Chicago dudes, like, like the comedian dudes, like Deion Cole, D-Ray, all them dudes, Bern- they, like, from that right. Bernie Mac era, you know right. what I mean? Yes. They focus on cash and, like, just having it. So D-Ray was like a guy, he he was on Wild and Out. I had met him. He used to fuck with Tracy Ellis Ross, and I used to be around Diana Ross kids. Mm-hmm. Like he was beating on her? I know, nah. He used to date Tracy Ellis Ross. Yeah, that's Ross. what I mean. I mean, not beating like Ike and <laughs> hey, Tina. I, we beating, gotta be clear. Beating like. No, he, yeah, you do have to be clear. He was I'm sorry, dating. Sorry, he was dating. He was sorry. dating <laughs> Tracy Ellis Ross. He was dating. She's Tra- fine, man. Yeah, She's yeah. Fine, and, um,. He used to take me up the wild and he just took kind of me, you know what I mean? He just thought I was cool. You like one invite of his me around. Cousins. Yeah, you Bro, know what I mean? Bro, a so, lot of people took kind of you, man. Yeah, so But why why do you think that? Cuz I keep it honest, man. I don't be one shit and I and I've always put my own money up. Like even if you invite me somewhere, you do not got to pay everything for me. Like I'm gonna figure out yeah, a way to pay my way. Well, you going to have to put half on this studio time. We done invited you here. <laughs> now, there's something honestly, honestly, there's something special about you because if people are saying it, people are going out of their way to do things for you. Even let's get back to Drake. Even like in 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 was it six a.m. in Dallas? Nine a.m. Nine a.m. in Dallas. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, even his say one of the lines he said. We'll, we'll play the record right now. I try to tell him don't judge me because you heard stuff. Chasing cash, that's my brother from the surf club. Damn, that nigga always kept it so hood. Back when we was smoke good at the Oak Woods and have girls fall through like coins in the couch. Now we just fucking all the bitches they want us about. When you hear those lyrics that he that he said that we spoke about before. One thing that sticks out to me is where he said, Chasing Cash always kept it so hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you just keep it real. Yo, I, I don't know. I just find that your journey has been amazing because here's a kid through Katrina, your yeah. parents struggling. You could have gave up at any time. I remember you telling me, like, um, there was no more high schools around. There was nothing around yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're eating. You know, you said that was the first time you spoke yeah, about yeah. it, eating army meals. Yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, you're a New Orleans kid making a song for Lil Wayne. So anyway, there's a lot to be proud of of, of the way you move. You ever but- heard that phrase, you know, you're going to hear more no's than yes? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be the yes for people. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't think I'm on the, I don't, like, you're going to meet someone who's going to put you on to something more than me. Somebody like, but I just don't like being someone that's going to, like, push somebody in the other direction me and drake bond basically started off us being two anomalies the same way he's different coming from canada i'm different coming from new orleans yeah. you so, said you never seen anyone so like uh courteous like him or so professional right and that's how people used to treat me because they just expected niggas from new orleans to just be crazy right. like and they would meet me and they'd be like oh you co- you so cool well dog like you chill like that, like we expecting everybody like we heard y'all kill everybody down there i'm like nah <laughs> man so with drake they were, he was getting so much flat. Then he's more light skinned than me. So I'm imagine getting a light skin treatment and you see another nigga getting the light skin treatment worse than you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Drake was getting. And I was hearing his talent and it was like people just did not give a fuck. I was telling people like, yo, this kid's the next fresh prince. Like he's gonna be the you, guy that you brought act, him then you, br- you brought him around. To Interscope right? everywhere, bro. The first time I, I brought Drake to a meeting, I knew he got it. He came dressed up like I would do, like how you would go get a job interview. He came head to toe in Prada Black. Like Prada Black is like purple label Ralph Lauren. That ain't cheap. Right. He was spinning dough. He came in that bitch looking nice. Walked him in there, man. And Where was this? Interscope. Okay. And um, 
the A and R at the time, he was like, he thought Drake was amazing. He just wanted Drake to write raps for other niggas. And I was like, no, bro. <laughs> like this kid is Fresh Prince, bro. Like he's gonna be in TV. He's gonna act. Like he's gonna do all that. Like he's on Degrassi already, dog. Like he's not regular like you think. Right. And they was like, well, where is he popping at? I'm like, bro, he's got a video. His, his video's been on 106 and Park. He paid for. It. He got a song with Trey Songs. This and that. This is the time where like 50 Cent just had everyone focus on fucking stats. No one cared. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have no fucking real sales, not these fake stats now. Like now these stats are fake. Right. Like 50 had real stats. And at Interscope, that's all they cared about. They're, everyone had numbers. Didn't you bring him to Pharrell uh, to talk about Drake? Yeah, yeah. For, and he had Chester French and Tiana Taylor. That's right. And that's, that's what he focused on. Yeah. And I give Pharrell this. He, he loved it. And I think the thing that like I Drake's music was kind of like still influenced by what we were listening to at the time to where you could listen to it and kind of like it sound like a Neptune beat and Pharrell didn't mm -hmm. make it. Right. That's kind of a turn off. If you he would did hear that. say he loved the clips growing up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So all, both of us, we were like huge fucking clips. Right. I'm I'm a clips day one fan. Anybody who probably follow me on Twitter. I know where the original Jada Kiss Knock Yourself Out beat came from and the clips wrapped on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had that first exclusive exclusive audio footage. That was me and Drake's bond. You feel me? Like, And you met him through Don Cannon? Did Don Cannon introduce him to you? I didn't meet him, but he came to meet Cannon and Cannon wasn't there. Okay. And then he heard of you and or you I was just at the, No, I was at the studio and I recognized him. Okay. And I told him, I was like, yo, I'm dude who talked to you on MySpace. I'm chasing cash. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, shit. He was like, I came up here to meet Cannon because he was trying to get Cannon, yo, I you, guess, to host a mixtape. You owe Tom a check from MySpace, man, because like all these stories stem from uh, MySpace. Nah, that nigga Tom owe, owe him he a owe check. Me. Yeah, I'm the plug. <laughs> okay. I got, I got him finessed Yo, I wonder up. what Tom is doing right now. Still on MySpace. Tom yeah, got man. an Instagram page. We can't trust him. Uh, he just like that guy. He might be like the Verizon dude. Verizon. Yep. He you gonna let me? You gonna be walking through my brain chasing? No, see, we look, we look. Yeah, hey, listen, you you're connecting, but back to uh, so so it's crazy too because you know um, a lot of people didn't see what you were saying. I remember you saying that. Uh, you, I, you, I introduced you, J Cole and Drake at a skating rink. Really? Facts to each other. You want to be like the new three L W? No, like nah, nah, like. I used to. But you introduced them. Yeah, yeah. Like P Polo used to throw these parties in skating in a skating rink in Cali and invite mad girls and shit like that, and it got popular. And I used to be at them. You know what I mean? And I invited as you should. And I, and I knew Cole used to skate because Cole told me one time when we talked that he used to work at a skating rink. And I remember talking to him on some bullshit like, "Man, we got a race one day. I will bet you." And I invited Cole to come through. Drake just happened to fucking randomly hit me like, yo, I'm in L.A., bro. What you doing? I was like, I'm at the skating rink. There's mad girls up here. Come through. And he came and me and Cole was out there skating. And I introduced him. And I'm not going to say that's what led up to their collab. Well, of course, but you introduced yeah, that's Hey, what Drake skate? No, nah, he didn't skate. He look, he that nigga that. Cole, nice though. <laughs> yeah. I seen, I Backwards, I seen, I seen a, a, a Drake skate. Um Buns, um, he came to Buns. He might uh, be good though, bro. No, no, he's not as good he as probably like Cole. He nice at tennis though. Nobody don't want to fuck with him on a tennis oh, really? court. Man, nigga, Macaron, ne next Macaron. That nigga, nice oh, at tennis. tennis. Well, he can do a basketball. Now. Hey, nigga, listen, nice. you, you, he can shoot, right. but he nice at tennis. You always believed in him. Yeah, and, that's my uh, man. It, it, it's amazing too. But you know, I guess he never gave up too because after you took him around, there's other people who took him around too, and finally got them to, you know, uh, uh, do things like. Um, Jay Prince. Yeah, nah, and Drake is um Drake is funny even with Jay Prince though. I could say with Jazz, you know, Jazz, his son, Jay Prince's son, Jazz. Mm -hmm. Jazz Prince, yeah. Yeah, Jazz was like one of those kids like me, you know. We're both from the South and we just saw like how like a bunch of the southern shit was just kind of like phasing out because he's from Houston. So the same way New Orleans had a big movement, sure. Houston had a fucking Absolutely. big movement. So we we both witnessed them and I think that's what made us be able to see that Drake was going to work because we saw we come from the home of the influences. Houston and New Orleans is like the the base of fucking influence if it's not New York. Yeah. Right. yeah. Before Atlanta became Atlanta now. You know right. what I mean? But it, before that, it was New Orleans and fucking Houston. And so the same, way, the same thing he saw in Drake, I saw in Drake. And that's what made us. So when Drake met us too, even when we couldn't help him get to where he wanted to go, he kept us, he kept us around. That's mm. one thing I would commend him for. Like, there was no situation where when I walked Drake in the Interscope and he didn't get a deal, he was just like, well, you know, it didn't go as planned. You know what I mean? Done with you. Right. It was just like, nah, it was just like, he, I was around him for a good while before he even rapped on a beat of mine. We was just good friends and didn't take care, just came around. 
And, you know, I just sampled fucking Static Major and it, it just came out. You know what I mean? It happened to work. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's endless too. You know, you think about, um, you know, with Drake. I remember you saying something um, where uh, he, the way he spoke to girls, you were like, yo, yeah, this yeah. dude gets it. Like, yeah, yeah, people yeah. thought he was corny. Yeah, yeah. But you were like, yo, he's smooth. I forgot how you put it, but you put something. It was more... Drake is receptive when he speak to women. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot from that with him. It, like you, it shows in his performance. You know what I mean? Like in his lyrics that he put in the songs, that he's been receptive to women. He know what to say that they want to hear. Not he's not. I feel like a lot of artists they can. We're men, so we just say it in a man thought instead of like broadening it and making it a human thought mm. and making it genderless. That nigga Drake know how to say some shit that both sides feel without having to pick a side. It's just like you say it, and if you're a girl or a boy, it's just like, damn, that shit is just potent. Right. You know what I mean? And that that comes from being able to listen. You know what I mean? When you listen to people, you can take what they say and kind of rewrite it. Yeah. And I tell you, he respects you too because, you know, um, I know that he uh, has called you and asked you for your choice of certain music, like what oh, to yeah. listen to. No, that's my and man right there. You put him on to, t tell the internet what you put him on to, uh, Outcast, right? All right. Nah, I ain't going to say put I put him on. I'm not going to no, say no, I put, put him on. on. No, I don't mean that. But, like, you know, and Drake is an internet nigga, so he, he, he scours the net, so he might hear this. Me and Drake just used to talk about music a lot. Being that he comes from Toronto, just like because I come from here, I got a, my boy, like my homies from up here, Tommy. They put me on NY shit mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. I haven't heard before, like old Clue tapes. Tommy old, Campos. Yeah, yeah, you know, old tapes and shit like that. Um, my boy Matt, he put me on stack bundles and like all the Max B and all the old Big Mike. Ev, you know, Ev, I don't know. Up, 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 up North, North Trips, of course. That's my homie. That's my really? big homie. Ev put me on. Good a, dude, man. Him and Johnny Shipes, I used to yep. run with them dudes. You feel me? Like, and they put me on a lot of shit because I'm not from here. So it was kind of like the same for me and Drake. It's not that he didn't. He knew who Outkast was. Of course. I don't but mean it's like, like that, yeah. The meat and potatoes of records, you know what I mean? That ain't the singles right. or like the shit that everybody ain't talking about. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just, and like with the same thing with him, he just put me on Mad Island shit, like Popcon and fucking, you know, the, the records he was was rapping on like likely and then like a lot of uk music and shit that i would have never paid attention to because the lingo that's british is is more popular in canada than it's popular over here and then the lingo that's more patois jamaican island patois is is popular over there than it is over here and i fucking love reggae music so that was like our twist and you told him to listen to uh well you basically spoke about baduism but how do you even uh i'm the worst Bad pronouncer baduism yeah yeah nah, and, and what's the outcast the, uh uh Aquimini and all that type see, of i can never pronounce yeah, that type yeah, of Aquimini, shit you know like the southern player Cal uh you know that type of shit basically the outcast that was in love and below and I like the way you move. Mm. Especially because um, Drake being such a big artist, I feel like people would just try to send him influence, like stuff that influences him that are other big artists. Right. Or like a song that just had sold like two million. And it's like, nah, man, like sometimes you just need to hear like a random ass Lil Wayne verse from an old squad tape. Mm. And that should inspire you to fucking make some hot shit. You know what I mean? And, you know, look at look at the record he has. Um, what what he sampled? He Drake keeps sampling bounce music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she rolled that dick like a soldier. She yeah. man, I grew up on that shit, man. Come on, man, niggas. <laughs> I, that, niggas didn't want to hear that. Yeah. And he makes it to where it's palatable, to where man, Big Frida is torn. Hold around on, hold on. That's the that's the word of the I day. Like Big Frida. Palatable. Palatable. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's the word. I'm like T.I., man. I'm always going to throw you some words out there, man. Me. Yeah, That's the T.I. in me, man. Throwing them big <laughs> words in the mix. No, nah, no. Nah, you, you, you know, another thing, too, you said off air that we spoke about that really, you know, and this is like the, we spoke a lot about Drake, so we'll move on. But uh, you were like, yo, the dude has a fucking store on Bond Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big. Um, explain I, explain why, why you know, it, you said a lot of kids that work, they're going to explain yeah, that. It's, it, it's big because it shows that... Um, yeah, zero to 100, literally, you know what I mean? Like, you can start from a blog and end up with a store in Soho on Bond Street, which is up the street from APC, which is, like, the heart of, like, the fashion district, like, the culture, you know what I mean? Like, where people throw culture around, like, th th he literally has a store in the heart of New York City, you know what I mean? Where OVO? All the, yeah, and the, the guys who are working it are people who he's been loyal to and who have been loyal to him, who have supported him from day one. Shout out Manny, Tommy, Leek. Everybody, the whole A-Life crew, Ange, everybody who, you know, basically met Drake and didn't front on him. 
Those mm-hmm. are the people who work at the store now. And beyond that, also, this kid is from Canada, man. This kid is from Canada. And he ain't asked nobody for shit. Say what they want about how he might have got like some sort of amazing deal. His music deserved that deal. Like Drake is literally one of the best songwriters on some Lionel Richie type shit, man. I don't care what nobody talk. What nobody. His dad say. was a Commodore. Yeah, but you know, even He's more. He's a Graham. You know what's funny? He's a Graham. Yeah, you know what's <laughs> funny too? Even because people, okay, a lot of these, a lot of people, or most, I feel like young kids want to talk about like how he don't write because of this. Uh, what's this dude's name? Quentin Miller, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, know, before when I when when I met him and before the people I knew around him. Yo, he was he was sitting when he just came on, like the first year or two, he was writing for writing for Beyonce. Bro. He was in the room with Beyonce writing. Bro, that like he said in his last interview, I was there, I I was in the car when he used to get dropped off at Dr. Dre's studio. Mm. <laughs> at record one. Like, dude is legit, man. Like, period point blank. Niggas who know me know I've been saying it. I'd have called him the GOAT before he all this six guy, all that. I knew it. I watched him do the verse for uh what was the shit he had with Hove? Oh, uh, Pound Cake? Not yeah, pound- I, yeah, I watched yeah. him do that. I watched him do the verse from Moment for Life on a mic hanging from a hotel room. Like, mm. that quick. And that verse is sick. I watched him do, like, like watched him do it in front of my face. 40 recording it, recording it in a hotel. Like, many verses. Same same way Boy Wonder said it. Like, I witnessed it. Same way Boy Wonder. Many people have witnessed it. At the end of the day, the guy is a mega star. And he is in a position where he can't do what he used to do and he's in position to also spread the wealth however that goes with quentin miller or meek mill and that shit going sour people get over that shit at the end of the day man i mean nikki had a lot to do with that going sour though true like but a lot at, of pillow talk and a lot of her initiating stuff and yeah. look that's gonna happen in music and entertainment at the end of the day i'm gonna tell you this Jay-Z is in a fucking songwriter Hall of Fame, and Tupac is in the Hall of Fame. That's my focus. I want to see Drake in the Hall of Fame. I want to see Cole in the Hall of Fame. I want to see myself in the Hall of Fame. I want to see Kendrick in the Hall of Fame. I just want to see people who take lyricism seriously. You know what I mean? Like, there, there are people I know they love music, and that's what I do appreciate about the trap generation, because music is music, and... I used to listen to songs like fucking Lil Jon, Get Crunk, Be a Bia, and That's Just My Baby Daddy from back in the day and shit that's like that. That's the shit right Yeah, there. you know what I mean? Who so that is? I get the mumble rap, but I do feel like uh, for hip-hop to continue doing what we got to do, people got to stand for something. If you stand for lyrics and that don't get you a million records sold, just be fine with that and figure out where to get your million elsewhere. Mm, sure. Listen, you know one thing I like that you said to me? You were speaking about, you know, obviously Drop the World played um on new york radio you know but that wasn't a new york artist yeah yeah, yeah. you also work with troy Ave. yeah yeah and you actually had made him a radio hit yeah, yeah. your style yeah yeah um you know speak on that how how that the radio that was the first time you've had a new york artist play and hot 97 was playing and you were yeah yeah and, yeah yeah, guess, nah, yeah man um it was an amazing feeling to hear my music on you know power and hot and jump in the cab and hear the shit and to see it you know, at um, Summer Jam. The thing about it the most, though, was, like I said, you know, with him, with Troy being an independent artist and also someone that they were counting out because up until that point, Troy, Troy was making, like, a lot of drug music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of shit rapping about coke and shit. And I remember he had an interview with Ebro. That's what really inspired me to make that beat. He had an interview with Ebro where Ebro was, like, fucking grilling the hell out of Troy. Like, how you just gonna keep rapping about coke and all of this and... I had worked with Troy and I just knew what he was capable of. I knew he listened to nothing but soul music in his off time and used to sing all these melodies and shit. And I just remember one day I was just like, I had listened to a fabulous song. Fab had this song called Right Now Later On, produced by Timbaland. And I heard the drum pattern and the shit was bouncy. It's the it's the song that plays at the end of the Holla Back Girl video. Mm-hmm. I had watched the Holla Back Girl video and that shit came on. I was like, damn, like... That nigga Troy might sound hard over this drum pattern. I just need to figure out a way to put like a new melody on it. Fabulous is Brooklyn. Troy, Brooklyn. You know what I mean? So I I took it. I found a sample that I felt like was kind of like poppy and bubblegum. I sent it to Troy and he killed it right away. He just killed it. I remember you saying that, um, you know, you felt that it was even more enticing because it was like there was so much disdain for him. You know what I mean? Like of how many people hated and I saw, how on many, the radio. I saw how many people that hated him start to like him just off of that record. Yeah. Because it was kind of like, hip-hop is interesting. It's like, 
when you make it without a hit record, they're like, how the fuck did you do it? Right. Then when they can't get rid of you, they're like, how the fuck is your, how the hell is he staying around without a hit record? Like, this guy isn't dropping anything I like, but every day I wake up, he's on Rap Radar. He's on this. He's on that. He's on that. He's on that. So Troy had all the connections and he had all that done as far as like, you know, where he had a, a presence. I just felt like he just needed a record. And that was that. He I gave them a record and he came with the hook. They had they put the bag behind it and the video was also, I feel like, a, a turning stone for him. You know, it made people look at him different. He wasn't brandishing guns all sure, in the video sure. and doing shit. We was in a roller rink, we had girls, everybody was skating and dancing and it was it was, it was a feel good music and it was a radio hit too. You know, and it reminded me of what I would call like some New York shit. That's a fact. Period. That's the only song I like from him. Now, um, have you sp have you spoke to him? Or? Um, I haven't spoke to him since to the initial incident. Okay. Um, we did music together. I was on his last project. I'm trying to remember what record it was, but uh, he definitely rapped on a beat of mine. And um, but nah, you know, we just haven't been in too much communication since then. I know you um worked with Lido. You yeah, know, who I think is pretty ill. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, has has he uh, gone to do his own thing now? Yes, Young Lido is working. He dropped a project recently. He got a song out called No Hook that he just put a video mm -hmm. out for. Y'all could check out. Um, I got some new stuff coming with Lido that I produced as far as also us rapping together. And I probably got like three or four joints on his next project. So, yeah, definitely look out for that. Hovane. Uh, who is also of the uh, who worked with Troy and he managed still him, works right? with yeah yeah he still works with Lido, um, he's running around doing his thing. Y'all can look out for the new ep episode that he has. He got this thing called uh, with Fancy called Best Seat in the House. Yeah, I seen that. And he's had I like Jeezy, what he's doing. Yeah, with he's that. had Jeezy on there so far. He's got uh, Charlemagne. I seen Charlemagne. He's got Lenny S coming up. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, you know all of us like you know we that moment that we went through you know with the BSB thing, good and bad blessing none of the less because you know it um we learned a lot and covered a lot of ground but i just think all of us you know us three together me hovain and Lido, you know we just looking for whatever greener pasture god got for us yeah i just you know it's sad it's a sad situation but you know you look at it like you know where, where you know it's just due to I don't know if he'll be making music anytime soon. Or well, hey, well Troy actually still working. Man, he ain't gonna stop. You no know, one thing. But about it seems him, like there's a lot of separation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think it, the legal situation made it like to where we had no choice but to just whatever Troy wanted to do. We just had to accept it. You know, he was on house arrest. We wasn't really around him like that. You know, and he was a father at the same time. He got family to take care of. So I could, I could only imagine. I would probably like not be as close to niggas I was once close with too if I was going through the type of situation, you know. But hopefully, you know, when when all this subsides, man, if my nigga holler at me, he needs some beats. You know what's up? Yeah. Who haven't you worked with that you would like to work with? I would like to work with Jay Z, man. I feel like I got a whole drive of shit that can get Jay Z back to some volume one, volume two shit. You know what I mean? Where he was like, hell no, you can't stop it. If it's hot, it's hot. My grind, keep him jumping out of drop to drop. My shine, lose your sight. Trying to watch, watch the watch. watch. When it yeah, jigger yeah. pop, jigger pop. And like pop, Snoopy pop, track sorry. with Juvie yeah. and shit like that. And you know, um, I would love to work with Hove. I would love to work with Freeway. I've never worked with mm. Freeway. Um, I would love to work with him. I would love to work with Nipsey Hustle, which I did. That's the your music cousin. just isn't out yet. But Nipsey, um There's a couple people you look like. Wait, 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 there's a couple people. Wait, he looks like <laughs> Nipsey Hustle. You also look like uh, you know, uh, Law from New Orleans Supreme That's Street. my nigga though. Yeah. That, <laughs> Law booked my first show. Really? Yeah, my first meet and greet, my first show. He used to have a, a boutique called Traffic Boutique. And, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. And, okay. and Supreme Street was his brand, and yeah, yeah, he booked my first show in the Howlin' Wolf. I, I listen. I mean, I haven't spoke to him. I Shout mean, out we, him, Jay Electronica. We, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, we like real like. Okay, so that's who you should get up here because everything I'm saying, he's like the counter. We was like at the same time. He like a year, uh, a couple years older than me. He was going by Crack Tracks, and Crack Tracks opened the door for Chasing Cash to follow through. Like what everything I'm doing. That I took to LA, he was doing that shit in the city where like there was no one else other than Manny Fresh. Like where Manny Fresh was the big producer, Law was really like the guy. He came, he was doing music for like Squad and and different mm -hmm. dudes like that. But yeah, man, yeah. Him, now he's been grinding for a minute, man. Yeah, man. And you know, working with Jay. I mean, yeah. shout out to Jay Ochanica. Those are both homies of mine. Yeah, nah, that's Law for real. Got it out the mud. No rep. 
Period. Point blank. Most definitely. Who are and your top five? Sorry. It's not. He's he's continued to do his things. But go ahead. Who are your top five rappers? Uh, Dead num- or alive. Uh, number one, I'm gonna go with Tupac. Number two, I'm gonna go with Biggie. Number three, I'm gonna go with Jay Z. Number four, I'm gonna go with Stack Bundles. Number five, I'm gonna go with Max B. You said five or ten? I said I said five. You wanna go ten? No, nah, I could go ten. Why Why Tupac before Biggie? Songs. So you're going more for like the content and less about the lyricism. Who it reached? Um, he don't got a Brenda's got a baby, and you got to keep your head up. Yeah, but he's got one kiss tonight. But he don't got a Brenda's got a he baby. Got, no, he, hey, listen, keep listen. Your head up. I'm, I'm a Brooklyn and I'm not dude. Compar- so, that, I, I'm not no, a no, Brooklyn no. dude, so I don't have no bias. In now you know. Right. You know why? Let me tell you something. For, for Biggie, keep I'm just, your head up is a big of, record. Of course, Brenda's got a baby is a big of record. Of course, but bro. but 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 uh, juicy, no buts. juicy is a big record no, too. No, that's man. not keep your head up. Juicy is a like my keep, head was still up after Juicy though. Like I felt empowered. No, but that's no. But Juicy is like like still like get fly music. Like no, like like. Pac really walked you through the like the back alley to the garbage can to pick the baby up. No, fam. I know, I know, I know what you're saying, but line for line too. No, we're not going line for line. Not, I don't but, do rap but, like that. Big, that's big, gay. That's like going no, no, no. in the store and going no, no, no. Sneak, hold on, hold on, sneaker hold on, hold on. for sneaker. Like listen, no, you don't but, do that. But listen, that's li- whack. Well, why? Listen, sorry, hold on, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. You cannot cut me off on this. Okay, there we go. Big, keep in mind, right? Big had songs that told stories he was way ahead of his time don't get me wrong Facts. Pa- Pac well, definitely told stories too but you can't say that Big wasn't meaningful too as- I, I didn't say that okay so this, is, this, is, this is what New York people have a problem of you doing gonna make this about New I'm York, not gonna say no but I listen relax. because look I see niggas like Yachty and all them <laughs> niggas get crucified cause they not as hip on like you gotta understand you like this, Yachty man. No, I'm just telling you, we come from the South. Y'all got to understand the reach. Pac shit reached us more than Biggie shit reached us. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Biggie ain't like, I love Biggie. I listen to that shit because I caught on to it later to where I could appreciate it. And from a rapper standpoint, mm-hmm. listening to Biggie will get you on your shit. If you are a regular everyday Joe, from what I've seen, Tupac has just touched more people who who don't have like the mind that big that Biggie got. Like Biggie had a fucking mind on him. You feel me? Like it like you really to like I I, I get what you mean with Long Kiss Goodnight. Like Biggie had a way with words that mm-hmm. Pac didn't have. Cause on that song that they did together, we already know who bodied who with the verse. Okay, but I don't get into that. I don't. We're not going to do that. I don't, no, 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 I don't no. believe in nobody gets smoked on a track. He got smoked, but yeah, that's I, what New I York wanna, people. What I'm from the South. Is, we don't listen to music like that because because if do, we look at it like that, Bun B smoked Pimp C every fucking song, and that's not the point. Mm. They got two different styles. Pimp C said more shit that I feel like niggas could quote. Off the rip, then oh, Bun B could. Oh, no, oh, but lyrically, lyrically Bun was. Thank you, thank you. But who? But if you said who was the better rapper, who you think people would say? Right. Bun B. Right. So that's what we gotta stop. This is all from the same culture. We all from the same walk of life. Niggas gotta stop doing that. And I, that's my stance. Period. Well, I listen. Get, I get tired of every time I come up here and people talk about music and Pac name come up and Biggie name come up. It's like this juxtapose or like this samurai sword well, fight. Well, Pac created now, that. St- no, they know niggas. They don't now, created that. It's 2017. That man been dead for how long? So we, whoa, we gotta that's stop. Legend. We gotta stop talking about the past. Right now, in this point in time, if you play a Tupac song and you play a Biggie song. Are you gonna feel good? Yeah, that's what matters. No, nah, no, nah, I agree, but I agree. I <laughs> that's agree with what that. matters, I agree, man. I agree with that's that. what the fuck matter, man. I agree with that to move to you know to evolve. To, but you know, I'll be honest with you, man, and, and I'm gonna be real honest with you. Growing up in Brooklyn, man, you know when 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 um you know the way Big Verse Pac, man, that shit was so real for us. Like I'll never forget, like we like we were driving around, you know, uh, uh, playing Who Shot You, man. I'll never forget. My man had this this Grand Jeep Cherokee, man. She was like a uh, 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 candy apple red, man. We had the chrome rims on the joint. We had the fucking. Uh, uh, um, and you, don't, you haven't no, heard. We, we had you the, haven't heard a pop song that made you feel. No, that of way? course, of course. Well, we we play hit him up. We play hit him up. You know what I mean? But like there we, was a shift in Tupac. But I'm just trying to tell you, like the the way I grew up, the Brooklyn kids that I grew up with, like yo, we like we we felt like that was our beef. 
Like, that's how serious that shit was. Like, we felt like that was our beef at the time. Now I look back at it, I'm like, yo, at the end of the day, like, these are the same kids that have Brooklyn tattoos well, on look, them well, and live in fucking, bro, and, and live in fucking and, LA. And y'all love the Knicks and the Knicks are terrible. So I don't like I, Knicks. New, York, <laughs> New Yorkers, like, everything. Like, what do you, you like, the Pelicans? I'm a new, I'm a diehard New Orleans person. Okay. Just like you, die, y'all die hard for the Knicks. I just think there's, there are hum, there's something in humans, if you're a thorough person, Ups and downs. You're just gonna ride with your community. Of period. course. So you're 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 a Brooklyn guy. So you're gonna roll with that. You're gonna side with that. Same way I. Same way we felt in fucking New Orleans. Sure, but, but, but I'm sure Wayne with Master P with, with a lot of people with with, with with Juvie. But here's the here's the point. For me, like you know you know what it is. Biggie always was bigger than Biggie. Pun intended. He always was like, yo, Brooklyn. Like, I never forget when he went up to those awards, he was like, yo, Brooklyn. Besides saying we did it, he's like, I'm just representing for the borough. And I'll be honest with you, that shit, like, like, like he made fat people feel fresh and clean, man. Like, I remember, like, dudes, I hung out with a lot of fat, a lot of big dudes, man. Only the ones that had the however. Nah, man. Listen, I'm telling you, man. Big, like, I'll never forget, like, he made me love Brooklyn so much more than I already did. That same way you feel about him, I've heard people who are adopted say that Tupac LA? made them feel that way. By LA? No, just adopted because okay. Tupac was a guy who moved around and bounced around in different circles. Yeah. And ha- and I hear people try to use that against him. Like, he, was well, jo- he was like jumping he, ship and yeah. hipping. He was in around. LA and he acted like an LA and he was in what? And that's what I do. And he was thorough enough to be there and not get his ass yeah, I'm and get that say, respect and it, earn it. So it, but this, like, he could have easily got un- there and got chumped. I know dudes who go many places and get chumped. They can't go around and even get love to assimilate and actually be called the real LA nigga or a real yeah. B more nigga. Let's think about these. Let's think about these places that he went to. Oakland is not nice and sunny like that. Yeah. South Central not nice and sunny like that. Back in the Rots riots and all that shit. So when people talk about this man like that, like I feel like we just gotta look at all of these artists who are not here anymore. Let's find the positives. Why the fuck do we gotta find the the differences between them? They not here no more. Yeah. So if if Biggie made people with a cock eye and who was fat feel fresh guess what Pac made short niggas who was abandoned and didn't grow up with friends feel proud about themselves no his listen his <laughs> lyrics his lyrics definitely <laughs> resonated his lyrics definitely resonated you know and and, and bird I, man made niggas who couldn't read out the know you feel great yeah <laughs> <laughs> like like r kelly made niggas out chicago who was fucking gds and stones who maybe would have never talked about their emotions when he made i wish that was the anthem who yeah. does chasing talk to who do I talk to? Yeah. Uh, explain that. Like you said that Pac is for this person. You oh, said that this um, was, who are you connected to? Millennial with? black kids. Period. Like uh like I'm a m I'm a uh two thousands black kid. So like that black kid who got a grandma who was extra broke and you know about the hood, but then at the same time, you know what I mean? Like my parents are educated. You know, like my, my parents they've they've worked hard to, you know, evolve my life. So you know, if you know what it's like to be broke, if you know what it's like to be middle class, and you know what it's like to have money, I speak to you. If you black, you feel me? Mm. Hey, listen. Period, point blank. Chasing Cash always dropping those gems. Listen, it's time for our I Don't Trust People segment. Internet, you know how to get involved. Hashtag I Don't Trust People. Let us know who you don't trust, what you don't trust. And if there's no fuck shit, we're going to put it on a future episode. Who we got this week? Our first submission comes from The Wolverine. I don't trust people who eat pizza with ranch. What do you mean, like ranch dressing? I'm assuming that's what yeah, he, unless he's talking that. about that movie Get Out and you go to the ranch ah, and you eat a pizza. Nah, that, I don't trust those people either. I, I mean, you don't put ranch pizza, you, you don't all, put you ranch put, dressing on pizza. Why not? Because you just I don't. Put hot sauce Let on me it. tell you something. You know who puts ranch dressing on, pe- on pizza? People who make salad pizza. And if you want a fucking salad, you put it in a bowl, and make a salad. You don't you have salad heard the pizza. Phrase, salad was invented by broke people. <laughs> <laughs> No, but now I didn't, I and let, I can see it. I no, I, and I agree. I agree. Lettuce, I don't fuck with lettuce. That shit is like the most pointless shit ever. Um, what? Lettuce is it has nothing in it. Spinach. Water. And, no, that's no, iceberg. That shit is fake. I like spinach and like kale. Kale is real. I don't really like kale, romaine. I always get yeah, spinach nah, I don't, anyway. Don't but don't fuck with nothing lettuce. Like get kale. Let spinach. us pray. Bow your heads. <laughs> Who we got next? Our next one comes from A. Todd. I don't trust people whose go-to social media is Facebook. I concur. Well, you know, definitely. Listen, I stopped I fucking agree. with Facebook it's a long time ago. Oh, you, you somebody grandma. And shit on that shit. 
<laughs> we say it's a lot of why. It'd be like KKK groups yeah, on Facebook the, and shit. Listen, that things 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 grow and niggas, live and exist on Facebook. Kill itself on Facebook, yeah. bro. I can't fuck with that. Yeah, that's right. Can, somebody kills himself Facebook Live, bro. A dude tried to jump off the bridge in New Orleans, and it was on Facebook and what World Star Live fuck? streaming. People get too crazy on social media. That's but the whole nah, thing. But nah, it's literally like hasn't it been like nine people who've like literally committed suicide on Facebook Live, like this year or some shit like that it's cause they know they gonna save the video if y'all really wanna be real do your shit on Instagram and whoever didn't see it don't see it it's 24 just hours. what it is if you, if you think it's real Hilarious. our next one comes from Mike Lowe I don't trust people who don't fucks with L and B Oh, L and B. Uh, it's a it's a legendary pizza spot in Brooklyn. Okay. L and B Spumoni Gardens. You don't fuck with me. Free tax stone for the culture, beloved. Okay, thank you. Okay, hey, listen. L and B has to me. L and B has some of the best squares. Um, you, and, I knew you knew what the squares was. No, no, most definitely some of the best squares in the game. But L and B has became touristy. Okay, so internet. If I fuck with you and you come into New York and you want to know what good pizza is, holla at me because I want to tell you something. When something becomes touristy, it don't become as good. And for people who don't know, I'm going to give them a little gem. They sold L&B about 15 years ago, the pizza side. So it's different people making it, man. And sometimes the recipe could turn. That's just my opinion. So, you know, but hey, listen, I still appreciate L&B pizza. But, um, you know, I think it's become touristy. And at the end of the day, when something becomes like that, it to me just becomes a little bit stale. I what about you, Jason? Do you have anything that you don't trust that What you don't people trust do people? or people? Yeah. I don't trust people who still eat pork mm, in mm, 2017. Mm. I stopped. Mm. You're wildin'. Simple don't you dare bacon shame me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to eat turkey bacon. Uh, uh, um. I- I'm sorry, Chase. I love you, but uh, you know I'm. I'm I fuck you got with my a bunch bacon. of shit you done tweeted where you say you can't trust me either. So we even. <laughs> I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I definitely <laughs> stop eating pork. We have one more. It's from a K Easy. I don't trust people that use cornflakes to bread fried chicken. Leave that trash for <laughs> breakfast. Yeah, hey, I've uh, seen people do that, man. White people. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag white people on that one. I've seen that. Listen, bread comes. The farthest you could go is panko, man. White people. You know. White people and Asian people. They both love. Fried frying but they got two different extremes to frying like yeah. asian and sh- shout out to my asian people because y'all know i fuck with y'all this is a funny thing this is not racial this is just the truth y'all will fry anything animal mm, mm. and white people will fry anything like fucking a oreo a fucking yeah, yeah. cheeto a That's fucking a fact. deep they fried fry kool-aid ice cream. let's fry like ice cream <laughs> no 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 asians deep fried started that. screwdriver asians started that asians started that Fri- fried ice cream oh. asians started oh yeah that. yeah no that, that yeah that, that's official though fried I, ice cream I, I, I didn't i didn't know how but, the, but the, <laughs> the, the deep fried kool-aid and all that shit we not rolling with that i don't know how they they, they did that but listen internet you know how to get involved and i don't trust people Hashtag I don't trust people on Twitter at Premium P at Premium P Show at Miss Listen Knows and it's at I don't trust PPL. Yeah, let us know who you don't trust, what you don't trust. Like I said, just fill up the hashtag, and we'll continue to you know feature you on future episodes. And listen, what I also want you to do is we spoke about it. Okay, I want to do some giveaways. So get into iTunes, rate, subscribe, leave a comment. You leave a comment for the next people from this episode on leaving comments. We can hit you up and send you something. Okay, I got not tons everybody. Of... Don't make it seem like everybody going to get something. Okay, now. we'll get well, nah, listen. You got this to. It's Oprah. like the lottery. You no, feel this me? ain't exactly. Lottery. This is hey, like hey, listen. Don't get a still, This is like getting a section a eight. Ticket. This is like getting a section eight apartment. Everybody going to apply, but everybody ain't going to get this. Well, how about this? Everybody goes to iTunes, rates, subscribes, and comments from this episode on. Right. I'm going to give them something, whether that be a phone call from me. Okay. Whether that be uh, any dick. advice I could give you. I don't, well, I'm not going to give dick to them. Uh, I don't know who it I is. I heard your shit was easy. Okay, you know, no, okay. my, hey, I'm Whoa. just saying. Or, you know, <laughs> listen, saying. I got tons of product I could give. I want to give stuff away to shit, people. I want to go rate and comment. Okay. Can I get some yeah, pasta? but if I see, see Miss Lissa, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, You know, gonna... I am somebody's baby mama. I know how to creep. I got four accounts. It's good. Okay, so I'm then, about to get something. Let me tell you something. If I send a hat to somebody and you come in here I'm wearing, wearing that, that fucking hat, hat I'm going to be pissed at you. <laughs> but anyway, listen, back to Chasing Cash as we wind up this episode. You, you did a project with Currency, man. Yeah, yeah, Cathedral. How was that, man? That was pretty good, man. Um, did you get, was, how high did you get with that? With high, doing? high. Not that high. Uh, honestly, it came about through um, my boy Les, who was uh, with Jet Life at the time, working and shit like that. And I used to go to Jet Lounge, and I used to run into Spitter and be telling him I got beats. And he just would be high and just be like, yeah, man, we're going to get up. And then Les just finally put us together. I sent the beats through. 
And Spitter just happened to just go on a fucking spree one night. Like, I didn't even know. I just happened to check Instagram or fucking Snapchat, and everyone was just, like, hitting me up. Like, yo, Spitter's rapping on your beats right now. I guess they kept hearing, like, the money sign and mm-hmm, shit like mm-hmm. that. And, um, yeah, you know, when it dropped, the thing I was excited about was the city was able to see us come together. I think that's the thing with New Orleans that needs to happen. People always talk about uh atlanta and you know la how they come together and shit like that and i think it was important for you know for him to be an og in the game and for me to have like some time under my belt for us to do a project put it out and uh, people still to this day they wake up every day and they be like yo i love that shit so you know whenever he's ready to drop the part two i'm ready i'm always excited to work with there you, you go know, currency chasing cash part two yeah, yeah, yeah. what else you got uh um, coming up the i got people? the i got the black jesus out right now which is uh, available on itunes uh t-h-e black jesus produced by jan sport j he's a guy from uh la he's got a very very refreshing sound kind of like dilla inspired so all types of dope tracks on there i dropped a single the single was called remind me featuring my young homie negus and then the second single was the black jesus both of the videos are out right now. As the World Turns video is out right now on YouTube. You can type that in, Chasing Cash, As the World Turns. You can type in Chasing Cash, The Black Jesus, to see the Black Jesus video. After that, I got the next single called Reporting Live from the Spaceship Dropping. That video will be coming out soon. And then I'm just going to continue to release visuals. You'll hear production coming from me with Lido. Some commercials you spoke about? Yeah, commercials, you know what I mean? Jingles, different shit. I'm scoring films for, you know, my Look friends who direct and That's shit like dope. that. That's dope. I've been writing mad jingles in my head. I'm yeah, yeah. Through. Nah, nah, look, I'm into that. I don't know if you, you're not like, if y'all used to watch the Jamie Foxx show and Jingles 3000, but mm-hmm. yeah, nigga really living like that. And <laughs> so, um, but in, in a more serious tone, like really taking it there, you know, um, that shit is big. I don't know it if really people really, is, but hip hop is like one of the, hip hop is the number one selling shit for commercials, period, point blank. Like whether it be just a 30 second beat in a, in a Mazda or a Nissan commercial. Didn't push a T right, ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving I'm it. I'm loving it. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah which Steve ended Stout up being a fucking Justin Timberlake. Yeah. So, I, so look, I'm glad y'all brought that in this conversation because that's where my mind is at for mm-hmm. Crown Bears and the Camp by Respecting. You know, taking everything that translation has done, everything that Rock Nation has done and giving, you know, people who want to be in entertainment, who want to be in urban entertainment, another home. I feel like there hasn't been enough homes. It's like getting drafted and everybody trying to go to the fucking Lakers mm. or trying to go to the uh, the number one team in the NFL. It's like, nah, you know, the beauty of the draft is that it's a bunch of good people. They get picked to go where they go and they make their situations better. So that's mm. what I want to do. Um, Oklahoma City was not a place people wanted to be. Now look at them. Mm. You feel me? Golden State Warriors, when they had Monte they, Ellis they, they and Baron yeah, Davis. Sure, they weren't that Exactly, you know what I mean? But Now, you, now, it's, now you, you can't you buy a, a ticket for, you feel for, me? for thousands. And the Lakers fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> and so do the Knicks. And the Knicks suck. Still, Knicks still exactly. suck. Exactly, so... That's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like, we got the I got the label, Crown Bearers, which is, you know, me, my boy Ski, Dow Jones, Money Matt. We got my boy Gus under that with his label, CGB, Can't Go Backwards. Then we got, you know, Can't Buy Respect, which is like the home, the agency, like Rock Nation, where, you know, we're basically providing opportunities. Mm-hmm. And if we can't provide an opportunity, but we got a resource and you got an idea, we helping you, like, resource your idea, however sure. we got to do it. So sure. that's what my goal is, man, to continue doing that. What What are you on uh, Instagram? Uh, T-H-E-H-E-I-R, like the heir to the throne. That nice. Me. Yeah. What about uh, Twitter? Twitter, Chase, the letter N, Cash with an E on the N. Uh, if you ain't following me, you probably see my tweets anyway and just don't want to follow me. Yo, that's me. one thing I will say. And <laughs> it's funny because I, I was telling Isaiah this and I was like, yo, um, for a long time, I think we respected each other's wisdom on, 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 on Twitter. Just yeah, on Twitter, yeah. I, I was like, "Yo, uh, this kid tweets major like and like, I just, and your fatherhood, yeah. honestly, you know yeah. what I mean? Like in hip hop, where niggas is known to be dead beats, man. Let's keep it one hundred. Like I really appreciate it how you was putting that in the forefront, as well as with like the food, just the all the diversity and the balance yeah. of it. You know what I mean? He wasn't taking a day off on it, seeming like, oh well, like when I post this, I don't get as much likes as when I post some combat. Most shit, definitely, most me? definitely, it was like, most nah, definitely. You was just doing your thing, and it was I found it interesting. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that because to be honest with you, that's the that that that's the lane I wanted to take was diversity. Yeah, I didn't want to just do one. I didn't just want to be a sneaker guy or just a. a, a I wanted to be a a, a bunch of things. And I'm glad that people got that. And I'll tell you, you know, one thing I really appreciate about you as we end this, even when things went south with me and dude, I mean, we cool now, but I'm saying things went south. 
you checked on me. You yeah, didn't have yeah, to yeah. do that, man. You know, like you checked on me. Is everything okay? You know, and hope all is well. And you know, you checked on me, and that meant a lot to me too. You know, uh, because it just shows that people are pure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, nah, look, man. I understand. Like, I know how this game goes with seniority, and then I know how this game goes on authenticity. And um, you were the authentic side of the relationship that I had out of that. You know what I mean? Like, we communicated, and I, I come in contact with him, and you know, he always showed me love too, but. I just think the reason why I checked on you is because, you know, you was authentic with me and then we just share similar interests. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you would post like ill ass pasta and I'd be seeing that shit like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? And, and hey, you listen, know, food, food is where it's yeah, at, man. man. You know, you, you know, you speak about the healthiness, too. You know, before we speak about Styles P. It's funny. Who would ever think Styles P would be yeah, a vegan? Yeah, would be a vegan. And uh, that's another thing. Like I said, um, that also goes back to like the camp by respecting and like providing another home for black women and men to identify with you know uh i love when people got that paper plane on their hat you know what i mean i love that shit you mm. know um i want people to feel the same way about juices for life i want them to feel the same way about can't buy respect you know and crown bears this is a brand that you know if you from the street if you from the hood if you hardcore whatever it is you could be all that and still be healthy still be aware mm, mm, mm. you know you should not have to compromise your awareness and your security and your uh your health and your wealth for being in hip-hop because for a long time i did feel like hip-hop it had it has it hip-hop still to this day has very very powerful things in it that are destructive mm. and that that'll tear us down and i love the fact that you know right now it seems like maturation and evolution has really been on the forefront of hip-hop shout out to jay-z diddy guys like you all y'all like these father figures of the game fabulous i love what fab does with his son and all oh, that yeah. shit niggas Crazy. need to see that niggas right. need to see niggas who go spend 30 on the who go spend 100 on the whip be a good dad yeah most definitely most Period. definitely you know you know as, as we end this episode you know like even like i've seen something this week with a uh, uh, complex they did something with chance the rapper yeah 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 with, 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 with noah, and noah uh sat down when i'm talking about dad shit i'll yeah. be honest with you i tweeted i was like yo that shit was awesome. You know why? Because we need to speak about uh, uh, loving our kids, and especially as a father, man. You, we, 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 like, like, it's not about showing off. We need to speak about the joys and the trials and the tribulations of being a father. Yeah. And because it helps other people. And a family That's man. Yeah, period. most definitely. Like, yo, I'll be yes. honest with you, man. Let me tell you something, and, and, and I'm gonna leave you on this note. But you know, growing up, you know, uh, being a separated dad, getting divorced early. One thing my parents. One thing I love about my parents that they gave me. Not only was there support, but dinner time. Yo, that shit meant everything to me. We were able to sit down. My father would ask me, you know, because he, he wasn't at every dinner because he worked three jobs. But he would ask me, like, how my day was. And I looked forward every, I couldn't wait. I'm, I used to skip my sisters and everybody go, wait your turn. <laughs> but I, I couldn't wait to tell them how my day was and then hear what he had to tell me. So to be honest with you, when, when, when me and my, my uh, wife got divorced and early on, and I was like, damn, man. I had to make my own dinner time. So I would just bring it to my family's house and show them, show her what they showed me. But now that I'm back at it again with a chance to do it, man, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, whatever, you know, these things are important, man. That presence means everything, man. So Yeah, nah, man. Look, family is the root of all things, man. That's the only way we're going to keep hip-hop alive. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I appreciate y'all having me up here. I appreciate the, the well-rounded discussion. You know what I mean? Check me out. And anytime y'all want to holler at the kid and have of me course. up here, man, y'all yeah, yeah, know what's up. Of course. Man. Listen, internet. A lot familiar. Of course. <laughs> listen, internet. Fuck with Chasing Cash. And more importantly, as we end this, everything he told you, where you could follow him, where you could find him, if you do know him, if you don't know him. But more importantly, I will say this. Check him on Twitter. I can't even I, I can't even think of the times to go back. He tweets so much because you ah, never find his tweets. Yeah, man. But more importantly, uh, dude... Definitely is inspiring, man. Definitely always putting out some knowledge to people. And you got to internet. Look, look for that shit because you know what? People who aren't selfish, man, those are people you could learn from. So anyway, Chasing Cash, Miss Listen Knows, Premium Pete. See you premium, next episode. Premium, 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 premium. <laughs> Cheers. Wow.